Go ahead and continue okay, the so story. Okay, so all I was saying is after we came back from dinner, I was going, I was like at a different speed, a different headspace completely than the movie. It just seemed really weird. And, and all of us were like, we, like mm-hmm. you know, Bonnie and myself. And Bonnie's like, I'm not into this. She had a headache. She says, I'm going to bed. And it wasn't even that late. He goes, I'm going to bed. And Jocelyn and I are is looking at me like, I, I can't even enjoy this right now. And we were like, yeah, we're so tired. It's like, what? Okay, well, I guess we're just going to go bed early. And she goes, that's okay. We're, we have a lot to do tomorrow, whatever. And, I, and the next day, I think I was supposed to go meet with the owner of the center for New Age. Because like I said, this was just prior to my moving here. And I was finalizing the, the plans to set up my UFO sign tour business and everything, you know. Mm-hmm. And so, um, so, uh, so anyway, so we go uh, to, to bed then. Bonnie and I go off to the guest house. And Jocelyn in the main house. So I'm, I fall asleep. Everything seems to be fine. I fall asleep rather quickly. And um, and I'm on the air mattress uh, asleep. And suddenly I'm woken up, just feeling like startled or something. Like, oh, God, you know, I want to I want to sleep good. It's going to be a busy day, you know. And all of a sudden this beam of blue light. Now, the guest house is one story. And... We're in the same large room together, but Bonnie's on the fold-out sofa bed, and I'm on the mattress and floor. And this big beam blue light, which, you know, as soon as that happens, it says, experience here, you go, okay, I know what this is, you know, right? You know, Mm -hmm. this this big big beam of light comes through the ceiling and over me, like a column of blue light. And 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 I'm woken up, and I go, oh, shit, you know, or I'm already awake. All of a sudden, like, imagine this, like, Gray, okay, grays, gray aliens, mm-hmm. standing outside of the beam, come, like, step forward, like, you see their, the front of their face and their shoulders start to come into this column of light, which is probably blue plasma. But anyway, so they're, like, stepping into it and out of darkness, and, and they approach me, so I, and I'm paralyzed in bed, so this is, you know, so mm-hmm. far a very common abduction experience, and... And they're around me, and I start, and the covers are pulled back or whatever, and I start in paralyzed in laying position. I'm starting to go up. I can move just enough, or maybe right before I was paralyzed, I looked over, and I think I was already going up, but or maybe maybe that's it. I, I turned my head to look at Bonnie. The next I go up, but I, my head's paralyzed now in that sideways position, so I'm kind of like, looking right over all of a sudden i see this big beam of blue light come over her bed separate Mm -hmm. from me again beings around her and she starts going up off the sofa bed and so we're 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 raising up now i'll come back to to that point in just Mm -hmm. a minute so so i'm gonna jump to the end or the next morning so after all this experience, which I'm about to go into in great detail, I'm put back in bed, covers pull up, you know, paralyzed or whatever. I, beings are around me. I'm lowered onto my bed in a beam of blue light. And they back off or, or go up or phase out or whatever, you know. And all of a sudden, I'm laying there in bed, and I start to be able to move. You know, it's the old abdict. You know, it's like you feel like you're hit by a Mack truck, you know. I'm like, oh, my God. You know, and I start to move, and I turn. And those mini blocks on the window are at an angle. So we're on the floor, and my head's looking up. I can see through them, like, like because they're thin, you know, and I, and I can see. You know, because they're just at the angle that I'm looking at. You know what I mean? So, so I could see clearly, and I saw this silver seed thing in the sky, and I'm looking. So I'm at the UFO, and it's oval, and it's not big, and I'm like, oh my god, I'm having a full structured craft sighting, and the sun's starting to come up. It's twilight, you know, mm-hmm. at that point. It's twilight, and and I'm like, oh, oh my god. Huh. You know, and so I, I get out of bed and I literally get out oh, and I'm, I, you know, I could barely move. I'm getting up. I go up to the blinds. Now, when I'm standing up, the blinds are like closed because they're at that angle. Right. You know, mm-hmm. you know, and so I pull them apart and I'm looking. So I'm literally like bend them apart and I'm looking at this thing and I'm going, oh, my God, I'm having a sighting. I'm fully conscious. And oh, my God, I just had an experience. Like I instantly have the memory of the beginning and the end. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, oh, shit, this is real. Right. I, I, I at least just left. I was. I was paralyzed, but then I'm still conscious. I never fell back asleep. They, they took off, and I'm still awake. Huh. And I'm conscious after the experience. So I pull the blinds up, and 
And and I see this crap. There's there's one lone great big pine tree right there on her property, next little guest house. And the thing goes behind the tree. I'm like, oh shit, I can't see, I can't. And the tree's totally blocking. I'm trying to bend my head, you know, gets the, you know, practically putting the cheek against the glass, to, you know. And I go, oh shoot, you know. And I and I go, well, it, okay, that tree's not that big. So if I go out the the, the front door at a little guest house, I'll be able to see it. And we're like, the guest house is like a big room, so we were, you know, the same room as the front door. And so I go up to the front door and I go to grab it and I hesitated, like, because I there's no porch cover or anything right there. If I step out that door, I'm right under this thing, you know, mm. based upon where I saw it. I'm like, oh, uh, uh, and I literally hesitate. Like, I just had an abduction. Like, uh, am I going to make it happen again? Or, you know? <laughs> I mean, just a moment of paranoia. And I reach for the door, and I kind of hesitate, and I go, when you're going to miss it, you want to see it. And so, go. I just, like, open the fucking door. I, let, I yell at myself, open the door. You know, so I turn the handle, and I step outside, and I look right to where it should be, and it's gone. But oh. I watched it out that window for, you know, a minute or two. I right. watched it pretty long. Yeah. I mean, at least a whole minute, not longer. I mean, I watched it, and it hovered, then it slowly moved behind the tree, and it was this big silver seed-shaped thing, you know, oval. Mm -hmm. And so so when I step out and I look right back at the tree, I'm looking all around, it's gone. I'm like, damn it. Oh. And if I hadn't hesitated, because I got up off, you know, I was already, well, I was already off the bed. I was looking out the mini black, so mm -hmm. I had run really quick, you know, to the door and gone right out. I probably would have seen it, but I hesitate for that minute, you know, just like, ah, oh, you're going to go right, you know, I don't know why. It's just a moment of hesitation, fear, right, whatever, you know. Right. And anyway, so when I was stepped out, it wasn't there. But then I realized, now that I'm outside, I'm like, oh, man. And I got up and moved really fast. You know, like any morning, you, when you finally get out of bed, you're like, oh, got to pee. <laughs> <laughs> and water. You know, and water. Moving around now, you know, you're like, and, oh, damn. You know, or you're thirsty. Yeah. 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 So I'm like, oh, God, I got to pee really fast. Well, the guest house. It's long story short, didn't have mm -hmm. a functioning restroom at the time. And Jocelyn had left the sliding glass door on the, because they, to get to the guest house, you went through the back patio, at least it was the most direct route at the time. So she left the uh, sliding glass door unlocked so we could come and go. You know, she said, you got to use the restroom during the night or in the morning, you know, come and go. Okay, so I, so I'm like, ah, okay, so I go to use the, 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 the restroom and it's, it's, um, it's still, it's still pretty dark out. It's the very beginning of twilight. And I'm thinking, oh, God, I need more sleep. So as soon as I go to the bathroom, I'm going to go back and go to bed. So my guess is it's like 4.30 or 5. You know, mm -hmm. it's very dark, but just the very beginning of sunrise, that kind of thing. And so, so but I opened the sliding glass door, and she had two big dogs, Jack and Emily, real names. And it, <laughs> Emily gets up on her hind legs and puts her big paws up on my shoulder. So she's like standing up with her paws on my shoulder. And she's going, no, 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 you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, Emily, do you know something just happened? Well, obviously, I mean, her behavior was very odd. And the way she instantly, she'd never done anything like that before. But she, she instantly did that, and she was making these weird noises like, are you okay? You know, if, if I could, you know, translate dog, you know, mm -hmm. it would be like, are you okay? Uh, you know, I saw that, and I, you know, whatever, you know, whatever. I mean, it was like, I'm like, what is going on? It was very weird behavior. And and, and it, she was heavy on my shoulder, so I had to lift her paws up and go, ow, you know, be, <laughs> be, you know, they have big cal talons on their dogs, you know. The toenails, and so I, ah, you know, so I put her down, and I put her down, and she backed up and tilted her head a couple times, like, well, fine, you know, and and then runs down the hallway and starts making weird noises outside the bedroom door, and I hear Jocelyn go to her bedroom door, like I can hear her in her room, run around. She goes to her, her the master bedroom door, and she's mm -hmm. like. Emily, what is wrong? What, what, Emily, what, what is wrong with you? You know, and she goes, will you come on in here? What's going on? What's going on? And closes her door. So Emily goes in the master bedroom. But I didn't, I'm like, oh, Jocelyn's up. I didn't want to wake anyone up. I was trying to be quiet. So I sneak in, use the restroom, sneak out. 
And I crawl back into bed and go back to sleep. <laughs> but, you know, even in the lecture, I talk about pets as witnesses and how that's right. happened to me a couple times. This was one of those times. And then when the way she went to the door, and that's why Jocelyn is like, what is wrong with you? I hear her <laughs> talking to her. And Jocelyn remembers all this, you know. She right. tells this whole thing, too. And her husband, Bill, you know. Anyway, so so I use the restroom. I go out. And it's still fairly dark out, and I'm like, I don't, I, I need more sleep, you know. We probably went to bed at one, and, you know, I've only had four hours of sleep. I, you know, I want a lot more, you know. <laughs> so I crawl into bed, and, uh, and luckily fell asleep. And I wake up later, and it's now, and I know this because I end up looking at the time, it's 7.30, okay. And then I'm like, oh, I can't sleep anymore, but at least I got, you know, probably another three hours of sleep, thank God, you know. So, okay, so now, or three and a half, even. so anyway, so I, uh, I, um, uh, fell asleep, woke up. Now, now when I went back into the room, Bonnie's snoring, she's out cold, you <laughs> know, I went back in the room. So, um, so, so when I wake up, though, Bonnie's not in her bed. Well, Bonnie was a heavy smoker, and so I knew she, oh, she's, I go, where's Bonnie? And I go, oh, I'm sure she's outside smoking. So, and I had, like, T-shirt and leggings on. That's what I had worn to bed, you know. Anyway, so I go outside the front door, and there's, like, a chaise lounge. And sure enough, there's Bonnie, and she takes a big hit. And I'm moving around, so if I sound funny, it's like I had to get up and pace while I'm telling this. That's okay. You know, it's intense, you know. Yeah. So she takes this big hit off a cigarette and goes, I saw you being taken last night. <gasps> Whoa. And I lean against the door. I fold my arms, lean against the door frame, pause. Mm -hmm. You know, this is all, you know, pause for drama, you know, and go, and I watched you being taken last night. And she looks at me and she says, I think, you know, she takes another big hit. She has this voice like this, you know, yeah, voice. Right. she goes, okay, I think we should go find out if Jocelyn. Oh. You know? She goes, Jocelyn was there too. I go, yeah, I know. And she goes, okay, let's go see if she remembers anything. Okay, so she, you know, so she finally puts her cigarette out, whatever, and we walk into the back of the house. So it's just 7 30 in the morning. Mm -hmm. We enter the back sliding glass door. Jocelyn's already up, bathrobe on, has made us coffee and says, I knew you guys were coming. Uh. <laughs> Maybe she heard us moving around. She probably heard us <laughs> talking outside, you know. And she goes, I knew you were coming. And, and, uh, and she goes, here's a cup of coffee. She's pouring them for us. <laughs> here's the sugar. Here's the cream. She says, keep your voices down. Bill's still asleep and Brenda's still asleep. Huh. So, okay. And so we take her coffee. She goes, let's go over. And see, they have this separate living room area where we're not in direct voice alignment with down the hallway where the bedrooms were. So we go in the living room area. And we're sitting on the couch. And she goes, so do you guys remember what happened last night? <laughs> <laughs> And, and Bonnie and I had talked about it outside, and we said, yeah. So we're talking about that in very low voices, and we kept our voice down. Like, me, yeah, maybe Bill and Brenda heard us up, you know, in the kitchen, but when we're in the living room, we're whispering, so they're not hearing it. And all of a sudden, we've been, we've been like, just talking about it for, you know, maybe half an hour or so. And all of a sudden, and very hushed tones, very hushed tones. And all of a sudden, we hear Brenda's door open, and Jocelyn goes, okay, don't talk about Brenda Hayes' stuff. Brenda oh. hates this stuff. She hates what I talk mm. about. She just, she, you, and, and I knew this prior. Jocelyn had told me the whole family has had abductions, you know. And and so uh, Brenda had been a previous abductee, but Jocelyn's like, she hates it. She, she, she gets really pissed when I talk about it, you know. So <laughs> we're like, okay. So, um, so we're like, okay. So we didn't say anything. And so she comes out of her room. We haven't said a thing. We're like, you know, oh, nice weather today. Or, you know, <laughs> <laughs> Oh, how did you sleep? I don't know. How did you sleep? You know? <laughs> oh, I need a little more cream in my coffee. You know, whatever. <laughs> yeah. And Brandy comes down the hallway and walking then and out into the, like the gray room, has, has her hand up, like talk to the hand without looking as she walks into the kitchen and says, I don't want to hear it. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so, Brent, so Jocelyn turns to us and goes, okay, Brenda remembers too. <laughs> <laughs> and she's like, I don't want to hear about it. And then we're sitting there, and Bill Bill calls out, and and he goes, uh, Jocelyn, come here. And she goes, no, I'm talking to these guys. No, you you want to see this? Come here. And she goes, what? And he goes, come here. You know, and she's like, what the hell? Well, he had gotten up and started working at his office desk. He, he was a real estate agent and was closing a, a deal that day mm -hmm. and had to get print out all the paperwork and then start to get ready and you know he was going to take a shower eat breakfast and then go meet clients probably at 
nine or ten something, you know. So um, he said, so he got up just to, he was nervous about making sure he got all the papers printed in, in, in order for them to sign. And so he was doing that. And he sits at the, the desk, which is, you know, they have this giant master bedroom and a, a deck, a wooden deck out to one side with a sliding glass door and then this big kind of picture window on this other side and the desk is right in the picture window. And he's sitting there and she goes in and, and she goes in kind of closes the door and we hear mumbling, but we can't tell what they're talking about. And all of a sudden she comes out of the room and she goes, follow me. And we're like, what? She goes, just follow me. You'll see. You'll see. <laughs> yeah, you'll see. Like, she takes us outside. We go through the backyard, big patio. Then there's this path that goes down and there's literally a little, one of those little curved bridges that goes over a little creek. So we go, to, we go down the path, we go the little bridge over the creek, and then they have, they have this giant side yard that's fenced in, that's like their dog run. It's mm-hmm. where they put the dogs all day and stuff, you know. And, you know, chain link fence around it. But one o- opening with a fence gate has, is, is like a big hedge. It's all, it's some kind of narrow boxwood trees or something that like make a big hedge, you know, like an eight foot tall hedge, you know, so, yeah, about eight foot tall. And then the, there's the opening between that. So we go down, we go to that gate, she opens it, we go through the hedge, and we instantly all gasp. No, no joke, what I'm about to tell you. There is, well, I'll just say it simply, 10 foot wide crop circle. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, no joke. What? what we have, what we have is her dog area side yard. This is, this is in November when this happened. Mm-hmm. It, and there's these two big oak trees and a, and a big sycamore tree. Uh, in her neighbor's yard, kind of right on the property lines, kind of both of their yards. Maybe it's technically in the neighbor's yard, but, you know, big fall trees, full fall leaves. And so the ground had been covered with fall leaves. It's, she had been meaning, and they had been putting off. They were waiting until after a rainy period or something to have their gardeners come in and mow it all down because it's, it's planted with, like, natural grasses, mm-hmm. and it was the sea of you know, like two foot tall weeds, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, sea of weeds. And then fall leaves. All of a sudden in the middle is this circle of dirt. <laughs> now, no weeds except for in the very middle. So, and yet, you know, if you went out and, and you, you had two foot tall big weeds and sure. you grabbed a big clump of healthy weeds and yanked them out of the ground, you'd have broken up ground and dirt clods, sure. right? Okay, exactly. And if you mowed them, you'd have big stalks, right? Yeah, exactly. These are these are there, like, suddenly they just, I mean, they're not there. Like, it just, like, vaporized. Huh. There's, the, the ground is unbroken, and it's not like anything was shaved down. <laughs> and it's this perfect circle, like, we, we measure it. I think it was 10 feet in diameter. Wow. Wow. And in the middle, though, there was a clump of weeds in the middle. Some of them were spiraled out in a circle, and some of them were twisted like a brake. Huh. So, we, you know, that's our crop circle. But that, right, it is like a crop circle. The ones in the middle were spiraled out on the outside, and in the mid, it, inside were twisted like a braid or a rope. Huh. And we're gone. And then all the fall leaves had been pushed out, which was a lot, covering the whole yard pushed out like a berm where around the outside edge of the circle was like a, you know, I'd say, you know, six inch easy hill of wheat, hill of big giant leaves. I mean, sycamores and oaks, these are giant fall leaves, you know, and it's, and this, and so like, like they'd been pushed out into this berm, you know, this wall of leaves around the outside and the, 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 the weeds on the outer edge, we're laying down all like one direction. So you had like literally like like the crop circle all going one direction, not broken. And we looked at the nose, like burnt out at the nose, you know, all the stuff that crop circles right, have. Right. You know, bent 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 at the nose, clearly bent at the nose. But not broken. Circle. But the not ones broken. In the middle, but they were laying sideways, bent at the nose, and it's a stock, a couple stocks in the middle sticking up were like braided. You know, we're like going, oh <laughs> my God. <laughs> and Bill's on the other side, he's sitting at his desk on the window, knocking on the glass and just pointing and laughing at us. Like, <laughs> you know? And we're like going, oh my God. Now, Jocelyn says, 
when we were taken that night, and you're going, well, how's this a mill oven? Got to get there. Okay. Let's start off as you know, obviously a human. And, right. And Jocelyn, now, when they came in her room that night, uh-oh, I heard a weird noise. We're, we're still good. Okay? We're good. Okay, okay. I heard an electronic noise. Yeah, it was a Skype thing from, okay, from okay. So, we're good. Okay, very good. So, Jocelyn, when she was taken that night, she tells this story, but I've heard it many, many times. Her and Bill are in bed. She's not dressed. Is you know, I didn't know work stuff at night usually too, unless like this, I'm sharing a room with somebody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but um, so, um, and she had a bunch of laundry to do. <laughs> when the gray show up in her room, and this big blue light, and she said the blue light came in from the patio, the sliding glass door, and um, and the grays walked off the patio into the bedroom as if the door wasn't there, like through the glass, or mm -hmm. was the glass was displaced, because she said all of a sudden they just came from the patio straight into the room like the glass was, you know, displaced in time or whatever. Just like when I went, when Bonnie and I went up through the ceiling, it's like this opening in the ceiling, you go up in the blue light, and, and for that moment, that that area within that column of light, there's no ceiling there. You know, right, they're able right. to displace it in space or time it's or whatever. A, right, okay. it's a different... Whole yeah. different. I, I mean, I've gone through walls and windows in my abductions where I felt like I went through the wall and the window, like I knife through butter, like I felt mm -hmm. like, you know, there's one time with a storm window and everything, and I remember, and it heavy wooden shutters, and I felt, I felt the screen and the heavy wooden shutters and mm -hmm. the two plates, two planes of glass with the storm window, and, you know, and, and I experienced all that, like, as they were levels of energy or something that I was moving through. Density. Like, you know. Like a the, density. The, the, like, some of it felt like electricity and some of it felt like a sponge. And, you know, it was an mm -hmm. experience uh, once at my parents' house. Anyway, so long story short. But this time it was, okay, she said it was just like they just came up the, off the deck in the back, like, you know, the sunglass door wasn't there. And she said they came in, and, and she goes, ah, oh, damn. And she goes, okay, fine. Leave Bill alone, he hates this shit. <laughs> <laughs> and, she said, and then she said she... she, she and she goes, and I, I have to put something on. She's conscious enough to make a choice. To oh. make. Okay. So she goes to a pile of laundry, and she goes, okay, well, it's, it's November. It's going to be cold out. She goes, and there's, she said a room was, because all of a sudden it's like a room was outdoors. She goes, it's freezing in here. Uh -huh. You know, she goes, you know, she thought, it's, you know, it was like a big thing. She's in bed, but she's like outside. So it's like freezing. And she goes, okay. So she goes, I need to put something warm on. So, so she goes to a pile, and in that blue light, it's almost like black light. <laughs> uh -huh, okay. You kind of lose what colors look like. You right, know? right. And so she pulls a pair of, you know, uh, uh, dark sw sweatpants and a light top, thinking this is, she thought it was like blue and gray or something, you mm -hmm. know, so she puts this on. It turns out, and this is really funny, because it was purple and bright green. <laughs> 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 kind of like, uh -huh. like, 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 um, uh, uh -huh. like grass green, you know, uh -huh. and, and faded old purple. <laughs> anyway, so, <laughs> which I remember seeing later, you know, because, you know, I saw her like that, and I'm like, oh, good, good combination. Yeah. Anyway, so, but, she, but she said, well, they look like shades of gray. <laughs> you know? uh -huh. So she puts them on, and she goes out, she walks out the blue light with the grays on to the back deck, then she's paralyzed, and then they float her up. And uh, so, so she goes up that way. But she told him, she goes, fine, if you're going to take me. Rule number one, okay? You don't, you know, you don't get to do this unless you follow the rules. Here's rule number one. You have to leave Bill alone. Well, they ended up taking him. That's their story, but you have to leave Bill alone. Bill and Brenda, leave him alone. They hate this shit. They hate this. You know? She said, secondly, you have to leave me evidence. I demand, and she says, if she's ever conscious right. of being experienced, before they can immobilize or do anything, she, she says out loud, I demand that you leave me physical evidence and proof of this, or deals off, you know. So she so she said, again, you know, I demand physical evidence, the deals off. I love that. Okay. So what we call the crop circle in the yard was... Her we evidence. call it the alien calling the alien calling card. And that was the evidence. Okay. Yes. But get this. We go out there. Finally, Bill comes out, and he says, "I had to come see this for myself up close." Mm -hmm. And he's tapping on the window and pointing. And he opened the window and he goes, "I'm coming out there," you know, uh -huh. you know, through the screen. And then so we, he comes around through the hedge where we came in, and he's out there and he goes, "Oh, what? What's that?" And now the day before, he was planting roses right under their bedroom window. Rose oh, nice. bushes and pruning them, pruning them and planting mm -hmm. some new ones, whatever. And so he had 
grow pot sitting there and bags of soil. And he put one in and he needed to plant another one. He said he ran out of time or daylight or whatever. And, and so there was a pile of like soil, like a, like a bag of soil had been poured out, if I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. Okay. And like fresh dirt. And he goes, oh, you guys, what's that? And there, it looks like a, no joke, no absolute joke. A little, like, imagine a, a little girl's Mary Jane hard bottom shoes with with a distinct heel line and then a curved toe line. You know, like, toe yeah. and heel, like, like Mary Jane shoes. You right. know what I mean? You right, know, exactly. So the heel goes straight across. Yeah. Okay. It was like, it was a six inch long, like a child's footprint, about just about six inches. Yeah, about exactly six, mm -hmm. six inches long. Maybe five inches. Five or five, whatever, it doesn't matter. Five or six inches long. Footprint in that fresh soil, which he had just dumped out because he was shoveling it. You know, he was shoveling right. it into the hole for the, you know, he took the one rose bush out of its grow pot, put some soil and put some more in afterwards. And then he, another one was still in the grow pot. He ran out of time to do it. But here's the the mound of fresh soil ready to go, right? Mm -hmm. Clean, untouched, like out of a bag, you know, soil. And and a lot, like a large bag. And so here's this kid's, like, footprint, like, and they don't have any kids. <laughs> and this oh, is that's no one, just you know. strange. That's and, a and degree of weirdness. That's, I mean, yeah. Who knows? But, you know, uh, I mean, we look at that thing and we're going, five-inch long kid's footprint, like right. a hard boot. You know, yeah, it's like the like, Bigfoot print, you know, now yeah, you have yeah, the, this, is, this has yes. got to be, this has got to be, a, this is, this got to be a gray something, right. some little boot or something. I mean, it, I mean, it was, it, we just sat there staring at going, wow. we, they, they clearly don't have kids. And, and, and because he was playing the roses, he hadn't let the dogs back there. Right, right. It's not anything now, like a dog. Now that was right. one thing, but this, this circle had they they had not they were going to have the gardeners come in and cut and then you know so they'd also left the dog poop mm -hmm. you know and mm -hmm. they're kind of embarrassed so it's full of weeds full of leaves mm -hmm. and full of piles of dog poop when the circle was cleared out none of that was there it was pristine untouched uh, soil like the like the like an art like, like they just vaporized the, the weeds <laughs> that were in it the grasses you know these grasses mm -hmm. because there was no broken ground like a lyric you pulled a clump out You'd have a lot of broken ground and dirt everywhere, sure. and messy and dirt everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you had cut it anyway, you'd have stubs. I right, mean, it was just—it right. was—it was like the weeds hadn't existed. Yet mm -hmm. the rest of the ground looked weathered and hard, and like everything, like like the ground between weeds yeah. and the rest of the yard looked. You know, it was like, how the hell is this possible? Right. Except for the clump in the middle that spiraled. You know, right? And so we took a bunch of pictures. Of stuff I was just going to ask like you that. with JJ. I mean, she's the photographer. You know, I hope you got pictures. So when we did get some, not as much as you would think, but we did. Yeah, mm -hmm. pictures were taken. Mm -hmm. I'd love to see those someday. Yeah, yeah. Um, well, it, that's another story because they may have disappeared. <laughs> oh, yeah, oh, 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 oh. But, but we had them for a long time, and I think uh, at this point we're pretty sure Honey has them, uh, an old computer that she backed up and has the hard drive for. And she said one day she went through it and she came across them again, so we're pretty sure Bonnie has them. Oh, that's on that cool. Hard drive. That's cool, okay. yes. But from, but from Jocelyn's computer, they disappeared. But given the next part of the story, this leads to, you know, a possible why that could happen in some way. Okay. Um, so, okay, so that's the full beginning and the end. Now, here's the, the, the abduction part, if you will. Okay, so that's the beginning, the end, and all the evidence, and the dust reacting, and the circle in the yard, and the footprint in the soil. Okay. So going back, and it's hard to believe, like, this is all part of the same experience, but mm -hmm. it is. Okay, so... Jocelyn, uh, okay, so when that beam of blue light came over me in the bed and I go up in it, next thing I know, I'm on a ship, but not so much like a exam table. It's more like kind of a, just a chaise lounge, like like maybe it's kind of like lays back at an angle, you know, mm. butt down, know and maybe one. there's a slight bend or rise right yeah. where your knees are up. So, and, like, I'm and, sitting in a big chair with my legs out in front of right. me, my knees are bent. And, and if this reclined back, it would be similar, you know. Right. And so Melinda, Melinda, we, we have five minutes, so. Till the end of the program? Y yes. Oh, okay. shoot, man. I know. 
I just take too, too long. Okay, I'm going to speed this up. Okay, I'm thank gonna, you. I'm going I'm to rip through this very big. Okay. okay. So here we are, and and I look next to me, and Jocelyn's next to me on this thing, and she looks over at me, but we both remember this, mm-hmm. and Bonnie's sitting at a, on like a different kind of bench seat, and she looks at us. So we're looking at each other. And there were these weird forms above me, and the greys were saying, watch these, study these, these are important. And it was almost like floating (coughs) three-dimensional geometric shapes above me. Mm. And it was either a projection, like they weren't there, and they were projecting this image to me, or there was something literally floating above me, it almost doesn't Mm -hmm. matter. Joss remembers the same thing. And they said, watch these, these are important. And they moved weird, and they were weird shapes. They weren't like perfect squares and triangles and spheres or anything. They were like, you know, put a triangle in a sphere and, or, you know, or, or whatever. They had like mm-hmm. weird points. They weren't, you know, some of them were more normal and some of them had weird shapes, but they were these weird, like stick a triangle and a sphere and a square into each other with part of it sticking out or something, you know? Okay. Mm-hmm. And they said, watch these. And I didn't know what that meant. They said, watch these. This, this, one, this is important. Okay. Keep watching. Mm-hmm. And you look away and they go, no, keep your, keep looking at them. Huh. And you're watching them turn. Okay. Now, Next thing I know, and this all goes on, okay, and we're looking at each other, and Bonnie just was kind of out of it, sitting mm-hmm. across from us on this bench seat thing. And next thing I know, we're being lowered, and all three of us, of course, we're, we're, we're dressed, you know, to the mm-hmm. way, well, Jocelyn had put on her green and purple sweat, you know, and I had my T-shirt and leggings, and I think Bonnie had something equivalent to me, like T-shirt and sweats or leggings. And so we're... We're being lowered, and next thing we know, or maybe we, there's a suddenly realization that we're standing in a parking lot that's lit under bright light, and there's this, like, commuter van next to us, like, bifold doors. Now I realize here in Sedona, all the big, big tour companies have those kind of vans, right. and our local city transportation has that, and they're just bigger or smaller, but some of them can see, you know, sit 12 people, some of them can sit, like, 24, 32 people, whatever. This was a bigger one. I think it probably sat, like, 24 people, and we're in this group, and and there's a couple other what appears to be other abdic keys. So there's the five of us. It's, wow. it's Bonnie, jo- Bonnie, Jocelyn, myself, of course, Bill and Brenda, the five of us, and a couple other abdic keys with us. But we can see in this big parking lot, and there's lines. We're on asphalt. There's lines. It's like you're, you know, it's like we're mm-hmm. in the parking lot somewhere. And under these other lights, and the, the surrounding area is, is, is dark. My eyes are still kind of adjusting, you know. And, and uh, but there's two other groups of abdic keys. Now, around us are guys in camouflage standing, what I would say is parade rest, you know, mm-hmm. either hands behind them or straight at their sides. Mm-hmm. Um, I think they had guns over their shoulders or something. It almost doesn't matter, but mm-hmm. they're standing around us and not a bunch. There's like, you know, there's five plus, let's say three other people. Let's say there's eight people, less than 10 for sure in our little mm-hmm. group, but each group had about that many. But standing around us, there's maybe three guards surrounding our little group. There is a guard standing next to the open bus doors, the bifold doors on the side of the white bus, unmarked, dark dark windows, unmarked, mm. you know, standing next to it. And we're here with this other group, and suddenly we're instructed by one of the guards, please follow us, and they take us to the bus, and all three groups of people, it wasn't that many people, like mm-hmm. I said, maybe we were eight times three, or maybe one of the group had, I think one of the groups was a smaller group. I think ours was eight, and another group had less people in it. But, you know, roughly 20 of us together, mm-hmm. okay, whatever. So they take us on. There's a guard sitting driving the bus, and one in the front seat, and there's a guard sitting in the very back seat. And it looks like they're all armed, and they're all in camouflage, desert camouflage. And so, they're all human. So, and they're all human. Oh, yeah, these are mm-hmm. completely human military. Mm-hmm. And we're getting on a Van, like it's very common in this town. You know? Yeah, very common. It's, it, this thing is though. I, I remember looking at the side as we approached. I think I kind of saw the back. It had zero markings. I don't think I saw the back back to see a license plate. But I mean, mm-hmm. I, I you know, and Jocelyn sure. said she was doing the same thing. I mean, we're conscious and aware, right? You Awake. know, and we're not talking to each other. I think we're all just kind of like, what the hell is this going, really going on? on? You right. know, a little bit of shock. And we go on, and maybe there's a few words. Jocelyn remembers my saying some more stuff to her. 
uh, beyond what I remember, but that's okay. You know, mm -hmm. I made, I probably did, you know, and, um, and we're sitting there and I think they're saying, don't talk, you know, and we pull out. Now I know we were in a parking lot behind the high school. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It has, um, a teacher's area parking, but then it's got this gated area where the school buses and stuff are kept, and I think we're back in there. We, we've surmised this based on the direction we came out and everything. We're thinking we're back in that gated area because mm -hmm. we're right up against – there's a hill right there, and we're right up against the hill, and I'm like – and we kind of remember there was this hill right there. So everything about it, I've been back and checked it all out, mm -hmm. and I've done it with Jocelyn, and we're like, okay, we're clearly here. This is the only thing that makes sense, mm -hmm. and the, you know, with everything – because we come – we pull out of there – and next thing I know, we're making a left turn onto what is Upper Red Rock Loop, and then from right there, it's you know 50 yards or something, and then you and then you're at the signal for 89A, and then we made a left at that signal, and so we're heading down the hill like if you've ever been to Sedona, like mm -hmm. towards Cottonwood. Right, right, no Cottonwood. And we drive down it, and we and we go a ways. We don't go all the way to Cottonwood, but we go past the Pines Resort there, mm -hmm. and a few other things. And so there's a turnoff, it's kind of in the middle of nowhere, but there's a turnoff for what's called Dirt Road 525 and 795, and then there's Bill Gray Road. So one of those three, mm -hmm. the, the van hangs a right, and it's got dark windows, and it's very dark out, so we can't really see. see. Mm -hmm. And we're thinking this is, you know, this has got to be... 3 a.m. or maybe a little or yeah about three I think we went to bed at like 12 30 or about one and so you know and um so we're driving and with these other people and you can tell other people on it are kind of freaked out and right. we pull on it's pavement for a while next thing I know we're on dirt and so I know we're gonna run out of time we so are we're gonna, oh you're gonna but, leave us on a but, cliffhanger but, this 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 dirt road eventually goes way out in the middle of nowhere. We're pitching and yawling in the van. It's it's turning around ruts, wow. maybe riverbeds around bushes. You know, like mm -hmm. it's turning, making sharp turns. It really slowed down after a while, and and we eventually go through. And there's you can see just enough outside, and we enter an area that's obviously got some lighting outside. And what it is is this big chain link fence system that looks temporary, like not permanently there but like you know set up just temporary and we we go into this area and there's a couple of dark jeeps parked there's other vans like ours the doors open we're escorted off and there's people coming off at least one more van like ours it may have been two but at least one so it's like 20 of us and 10 or 20 on another van and another van you know and we're being taken off and there's a couple of what look like black jeeps. There's guys dressed on black. There's guys in camouflage. There's guys kind of lean in a row, like we're kind of walking between a column of guards. And Jocelyn and I both take a good look, but independent, we weren't talking, but we both did the same thing to look at the hillside. So like, we're both thinking if I'm ever here again, or I see this again, I'll know what I'm looking at. Like, this is, this is not far from Stoner. We can find this. She was doing the same thing. We were both, we weren't talking about it, but we both did the same thing. And we remember what the hillside looked like, but there were these doors going into the hillside and we're, we walk in and we're um, taken down. A, first it's like just dirt. And then the dirt gives to like underneath the dirt and lessening and lessening dirt. So it's like scattered dirt, you know, uh, scattered sand and dirt, you know, desert sand. And, and then we're on, the first asphalt, and then the asphalt eventually ends, and there's, like, concrete, okay? But clearly there's, like, asphalt going down, and I actually see a line start to emerge, like this is, a, there's a road. And these these doors look like there were doors that go in and open, like, as if you went to the gym or the movie theater and the panic emergency doors on the side. Oh, yeah. You know, kind of like that with yeah. a big metal, like, butt, butt bar, you know, emergency mm -hmm. release bar. And they were kind of like that, opened in. But you could tell that this opening, like, the, like you could open those or those were part of a bigger door system that could be open to a, a bigger door, like you could drive a small vehicle into or something, you know. Mm -hmm. So not anything big, but a smaller truck or something. And so, but... They walk us in, and you see this road, so it's like, okay, that's asphalt, that's a dotted line, there's clearly like a, a, a road there. And on the right, the asphalt gives way to like a moving walkway, like at an airport, you know, just mm -hmm. like when you go to the airport and the, you know, the moving walkways, exa exactly that. And so, I mean, identical. So that's what we get on, we get on one of those just like you would at the airport. 
And to the to the right, as this thing's moving along, there are a bank of windows that are set in and tilted like maybe 45 degree angle, maybe a little bit less. And in 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 the railing on the walkway, you could kind of lean over towards this bank of windows that were set in. So maybe they were set back three feet away from us mm-hmm. and at an angle, but you could kind of lean forward and you could see a work area down below. Like maybe when you looked in, it was at least one, maybe two stories. And then there was this big kind of warehouse work area. And there were guys in camouflage and guys in clean suits. And um, each area, there were areas with no one and then areas where work was going on. It looked like, when I say work, it looked like labs and and maybe a little light manufacturing or something, you know, that kind of thing. Right, right. And, and you're like, oh, wow, it's clearly military and like science folks, you know, lab coats and stuff. And, and we're moving along, and everyone's leaning over and going, whoa, what, well, you know, trying to figure out what they're doing, you know. And, it, 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 you know, you couldn't really tell. It was just, you know, looked like projects or something. And, and not a lot of people, just occasionally there would be areas almost like cubicles with nobody, you know. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden there would be somebody doing something. And we're like, wow, you know, technology, development, lab work, a little bit of both, you know, whatever. And, um, and then eventually the, the walkway ends. Um, and, and so you, you get off, but then there's a hallway to the right and the hallway to the right is like a hallway bridge going over the, this big open work area down below. And that hallway bridge has some windows along it. Occasionally, like every couple of feet, there's like a three foot window or something, you know, but when you go across that bridge, you can look down and look, you know, so it's all meant to be able to look down on. And that bridge goes across. And eventually ends, and then there's this other long hallway, and when we get to that hallway, we're all lined up, and we realize this is a, a mass mill up abduction. There's like, we didn't know one counted, but we're like, there's got to be a hundred of us there. Wow. But not some people think over a hundred. Some people say, well, at least eighty. You know, we no one counted, but it it, it seemed like roughly a yeah. no, hundred of us, and everyone is wearing whatever stage of dress. No, no one's naked, but there right. are guys just in boxer shorts. Right. You know, there's and there's women in bras and panties. So there's women in bras and panties and guys in boxer shorts, people in sweats and t-shirts and leggings or a t-shirt and boxer shorts or whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, it's just like whatever you were wearing that night or whatever was close for them for you to put on or whatever, you know. Right, right. And we don't know if other people were taken from their homes by military with us. Yeah, it was ETs. And we were I call it a handoff. It's very common in my research uh-huh. to be handed over to people. Right. You know. So 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 we're in there. We end up now. How much more time do I have? Are we ending? We're having as much as you want because I just closed. Um, I had closed Revolution Radio, and we're just going to carry on on Facebook. So is this recorded? <laughs> like anyone who was shut out of there will be able to come back and listen to this. Uh, they can come back on Facebook okay. and listen. Yeah. Okay. So okay, okay. Well, and you I, are I on, and you are live on Facebook now. Oh, I am live on yes. Facebook. Yes. Okay. Well, hopefully, anyone where you had to shut it will. will know to come in. Or, they will. Okay. okay. Yeah. Find the recording. Go on, yes. gotta hear the rest of that. Okay, so we're, we're lined up down this hallway with all these people. It takes a while to realize that they're slowly taking us into, down the hallway, there's a, a doorway on the right, that eventually we're taken in in groups. So you'll, you know, all of a sudden the, the line moved a bunch, you know, the line moved by 10 or 20 people in the office and you'd stand there for a long time and then it would move. So they were taking us in there. And eventually, because we didn't know what that was, and and at this point, Joss and I start kind of like chuckling at each other, like like she's looking at what I'm wearing and I'm looking at what she's wearing. And I'm like, really? And I'm looking at her. This is when I'm like, what, what are you wearing? She's looking at me like, yeah, you should talk. I, I think that we were instructed maybe not to talk, but I think, just like it being bad. <laughs> right, good. <laughs> you know, and, and, uh, and, and, and it probably, you know, no one was fighting this or being really, you know, whatever. So we are probably sedated at some point in some mm-hmm. way that mm-hmm. I'd have to ask Justin, do you remember at that point, did they give us something when they took us off the van as soon as we got there? I had a big memory that maybe we were getting a shot get coming off the van or something. Uh-huh. But 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 yet they wanted us fully conscious and functioning. Um, either that or, you know, or I'd have to ask her or say, or were, were we given some trigger commands or something? You know, because mm-hmm. these were probably all people that 
you could know, do that. Been here, done this kind of stuff before, right. like that. Right. So, um, and uh, and Bonnie remembers all this too. You know, um, now when I say remembers, we all had bits and pieces of conscious memory. We talked about it a little bit the morning afterwards, and well, about you, two months you, after the event, Bonnie had a chance at a conference to get regressed by Yvonne Smith. Mm. Yvonne kept saying to, so uh, that was Jocelyn. I mean, Jocelyn had a, you know, attending a conference support group, said something to Yvonne and went and had a separate session with her. Mm -hmm. So she got regressed at the conference by Yvonne in Yvonne's hotel room. Like most of the regression therapists, when they do a conference, they regress people. Yes. They take, you know, so so she had done that. Um, with me, it was many, many months later and much prodding by Yvonne that I eventually, um, I was still living in California at the time and her office was down towards San Diego, I think Carlsbad and I went down to Carlsbad and she regressed me about it. And, uh, and eventually even months after me or maybe even a year later, she finally regressed by, mm-hmm. but job, but, but, uh, Yvonne Smith says the three of us clearly in our regressions clearly recall the same experience right now now uh bill and brenda never wanted to get regressed um they just chose not to like jocelyn says they hate this but she says over the years since it has come up in family discussions and she said and one-on-one with her and you know sometimes together sometimes one-on-one with her and she said what what do you remember she said melinda they remember everything we did you know, huh. consciously. Right. So they didn't need regression just over time. I mean, she said maybe they don't remember quite as much, but she says they do remember the significant parts. Right. Um, so, so, but, but, but Bonnie, Jocelyn, and me all had separate regressions with Yvonne Smith, and Yvonne Smith said, oh, yeah, our memories are perfect. Match, right on. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and that's happened with, with Yvonne and like, you know, other events mm-hmm. uh, with me and other people that she's regressed and, and, Deborah and Colley did that a bunch when I've been, because I've had other abductions taken with other people. And, you know, so in, in each case, everybody's remembering the same thing, you know, um, it, literally in, in each case. I haven't had, I haven't had a group abduction with me, one, two, three, four, five, ten, twenty hundred other people that the other people also didn't remember. Now, now, jo, you know, Yvonne's not worked with anyone else from this event. She'd like to. Mm-hmm. And, and, and I do have a follow-up story of one guy. So remind me later. Okay. And, Cause I'll go back to the, the story. Okay. But remind me to share the one guy that two years later came forward who was part of our experience. Wow. That's All an right. amazing story. Oh, it's an All amazing right. All right. story. Amazing piece of evidence for, okay. for me. Um, okay. So, um, so going back to, so we're lined up there in the hallway. They take us in, in this doorway. When we go in the doorway, there's a bunch of these little plastic, chairs and some of them have um uh, returns on remember uh like old school chairs you know have a little thing arm that comes up with a little table right 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 and uh, some of them some of them i think were, were like that at least maybe the ones in the back row and they, these these were just stackable white you know all-purpose plastic chairs with metal you know aluminum legs just you know mm-hmm. pretty standard like you'd see anywhere at school you know or uh you know whatever uh church educational center something you know whatever okay and uh, and and we're sitting in those and i remember there were two or three rows i think well probably at least three rows thick um and they had us sit and for some reason uh, i keep thinking there were about 12 people in there once you know maybe it was a few more maybe it was a few less like it may have been a few more 12 to 15 let's say sitting in there once and they had this suspended object that looked like a teardrop on its side that looked ET. Maybe it was supposed to represent like the shape of a craft or maybe something else, but it imagine kind of a a teardrop. So big tear long like really a long teardrop with mm-hmm. a long point so it's on cl- its side and maybe the bottom half of the bottom one third shaved off. So I remember it was kind of like flat on the bottom and on its side and tapered to a point. And was it clear? Was it clear? No, no. Uh, I remember it kind of being orangey colored mm-hmm. and it, it was either like orangey red and or a metallic that color. Mm. Uh, I think it had a metallic, like almost like brass or copper kind of look. Mm. Okay. And, and it, there's a debate. I, I 
think it was probably suspended on a wire or something, but it may have been floating because, you know, it almost sure. doesn't matter. Sure. Okay. They had a stand up one at a time and they had this wall of what I now know as um, headset wa uh, wires coming down with um, EKG wiring. Mm -hmm. So if you may, if you think of like a loose cap with gaps in it, like mm -hmm. a, a netting, okay? Right. Right. With EKG wires all over it, like mm -hmm. maybe, like, and that's for brainwave monitoring. Right. People don't know what I'm talking about. Brainwave monitoring, like little white discs with these wires hanging down, and the wires were kind of clumped together and tied off. Mm -hmm. And they had a bunch of these, so they'd have you get up as a small group and have, and they take these off the hook on the wall and put them on you, put the cap, maybe kind of stretch it over, and they'd rearrange it and, you know, make sure the wiring was good. And then, Across the, the room from us was this tiered area. If you've ever, like, swung, come tight, sung in, like, a choir, and there's been, like, tiered stepping. That oh, yeah. That maybe is, like, like exactly. let's say it's four foot wide. Like, like let, let's say there's, there's it maybe goes up two feet, and mm -hmm. then back four, and then mm -hmm. up two feet, mm -hmm. and back four, and up two feet, and back four. Like, yeah. okay. Okay? Like a On each level were, were folding white linoleum tables. You know, like just basic utility right. tables that, that were temporary. And there were a couple of computers, and there were people in lab coats. Wow. And, of course, there was military people around. And once you got hooked up with this, um, the people in the lab coats would go, okay, we're getting a good read. And so I want to say there were like four tables, four, you know, who knows, you know, at least four tables with two lab technicians each, you know. Mm -hmm. And and people would be hooked up, but yet you you, they had you step forward and one at a time. They did this. Now, I've left out a big detail. In this room, and this is the first time in this, well, okay, we're taken by EPs, right? Mm -hmm. And we're on a little craft with them, and they show us these floating dimensional things over us, right? Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden, we're with humans. Mm -hmm. So all of a sudden, we come in this room to get these caps put on. You're sat in these chairs, brought up in small groups to put the caps on and wait in the chairs. And there are what I would call elder ETs, Elder Grace, in the room. Mm. Now, the guys who took us were the typical little guys, mm -hmm. very typical little guys out of the house, you know, four mm -hmm. foot, you know, range between three and a half, well, probably range between four and six foot or four and five foot five, let's say, you know, mm -hmm. very typical. Small bodies, just your very average Grace. Big heads, wrap around eyes, the whole thing, you know, very typical. And suddenly, these guys are taller Grays, sunken cheeks, the wrinkled foreheads, you know, what's often referred to as elder grays right, because yeah. they look older. Um, they're definitely taller than the other ones, and I would say as thin, but as soon as you make something that's four foot into something that's six foot and that tall looks thinner, you know, they're real thin. And uh, But but they just look like elder grays, what can I say? And, and, and what with the squires hanging down, what they would do is they'd have you step up, and the guards were in there, so you were never, you know, you knew you were never going to act out. There were armed guards everywhere, but not, you know, but it didn't ever feel threatening mm -hmm. in this case, you know. And they said, okay, we want you to move this with your mind, like psychokinesis, move this, this object. And they'd have you stand, like, you know, three feet away from it or something. But what they would do is there was, there would be a folk, a, you know, maybe a guard nearby, but a person in a lab coat, you know, instructing you. And then there was this guy that was more dressed military as far as he had a, a short sleeve white shirt, you know, button shirt with collar, but epaulettes on his shoulder. And they were calling him captain. So there you go, you mm -hmm. know. And we all kind of remember what this guy looked like, this blonde guy. And, um, but, you know, not, it's hard to place age, but I place some for sure, at least his 30s, probably in his 40s, you know, mm -hmm. and, and he was kind of, everyone was nice, and please do this, and please do that, and bedside manner, you know, but this guy was kind of, okay, you have to do this, you know, and he'd be kind of strict, like, okay, do it again, you know, he was being very formal, and mm -hmm. keeping things moving, like, that we got to keep this moving, you know, we're, everything's on a time constraint right. to get through all these people, you know, okay, so, they put the cap on, and, he, and, the, and then what they would do is two of these elder grays would come stand, like, on either side of you. I said, can you make this move? And they were kind of leaning in. So I realized after a while, like, they were, some, 
somehow helping. Well, you know? Yeah, yeah, hooking up now, the energy. Some of the people couldn't move it. And if it didn't move or the person was being argumentative, Bonnie, what? <laughs> 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 she's the stupidest thing ever. You know? She's like, this is stupid. I don't want to do this. And it's like either she just, either she couldn't and was like, ah, this is dumb. Or, or. She didn't want to play. Or she didn't want to or whatever. She, yeah. she, you know, either she couldn't and she was covering for her frustration. Mm-hmm. And maybe she couldn't and covering for her frustration. Or she was just in a bad mood, like, I damn it, I, you know, I've done an hour without a fucking cigarette. Get in. You know? Right, right. Maybe for cussing or anything, but, you know. Yeah. But, you know, so, you know. And so, you know, she's probably getting cranky. It's like, I haven't slept. I haven't, you know, it's been an hour since the cigarette. I damn it, I need a cigarette. You know, I know, she wasn't, you know. But, I like you know, her. I got to meet her. Was <laughs> and Joss and I both remembered this, and Yvonne says in our regressions, we we're both like, God, you know, like she just she's just being difficult, you know. So anyone who either couldn't do it or was being difficult, they there was a, a door on the other side of the room, just to our right away, eight feet, ten feet away. And it was just your basic utility door, but it had what you call like, like the security window, you know, little window you know, in the middle of it. Right. With crisscrossing wires, you know. And it basic not a round door handle but one that kind of comes up and curves like a metal you know utility handle and and a guard would open it and the person would walk out and the guard on in the hallway would meet you up you know and you could tell through the window anyone who was being difficult or couldn't do it would go the right mm -hmm. but if someone did it really good you'd go to the left so jocelyn goes up right in front of me and the thing moved and what they would do is you would do it with the et standing next to you Right. And it would move. And then they'd have them back off, and they'd say, okay, do it again. But they have the ET's step, you know, another five or ten feet away. Or oh. even go over by the computers, and they'd say, do it again. And then you would do it again with the ET's and then do it on your own. Uh -huh. And this was all, you know, happening pretty fast, just a couple right. of minutes. And, um, and I, you know, some people could do it with the ET's, but not on um, their own. Mm -hmm. So you only got taken out the door and went to the left if you also did it on your own. So Jocelyn goes up right before me, I mean, right in front of me, aces it, you know, mm -hmm. just, you know, does it with the ETs, they back off. In fact, they did it more times with me, like with Jocelyn, it was like, do it once with the ETs, do it on her own, and then they had her do it on her own again, and that was it. Mm -hmm. With me, they had the ETs next to me, they backed off, I did it, they had not come back up, they did it because a couple times didn't work as well, so if she, like, did it once with the ETs and twice on her own, I had to do it, like, like twice with ETs and three times on my own, mm. you know, but, and, but she went out the door and to the left. But once I got to, cause I was like, damn it, I want to go wherever Joss is. I desire. You had motivation. But that can also block you, you know, in paranormal stuff that can block you. Right. And ETs were clearly helping, but they would help you and then they'd back off. Mm -hmm. And you were still like in that energy, but could you still do it Hold without it. them yeah. being as close, you know? And anyway, so, so I did. And it wasn't moving a lot. It's just kind of like make it swing through the air or whatever, mm -hmm. just, you know. And, it, you know, but but I finally I was, like, doing it twice in a row without the ETs. So I'm like, oh, thank God. So sure, and I go, well, I hope they'll take me to the left, not to the right. Mm -hmm. Like, you just kind of knew, you know. And I, and I think people, there were people who were just kind of freaked out. People, you know, whatever. Okay. Um, so, so Jocelyn goes to the, the left, but she really aced it. I mean, she didn't much, she's like, boom, 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 done. You know me? I'm like, okay, we, we got to do it again with you. And meanwhile, the people on the computers were reporting back, oh, have her do it again. Like they were, they yes, were saying, okay, have her do it again. And then the, the guy in the white shirt and the uplets was okay, do it again. Yeah. Captain's bars on, you know? Um, and so, um. And a uh, naval captain, probably, you know, is because all this whole stuff with the underground bases is is naval operations mm -hmm. um, for the most part. Uh, anyway, so um, Navy Marines, you know, that kind of thing. But but obviously, you know, deep black you yeah. know, secret yeah. projects, yeah. secret space program, you know, that stuff. So <clears throat> so um, <clears throat> she goes to the left. Now they take me out the door and take me to the left. <clears throat> We go down a short hallway, it's not even that long, and there's a door on the right, and, they, and a guard takes me to it, opens it, and says, uh, w w you know, step in and walk over there. And he steps back by the door, so he's still by the door, but some guys, it, there's, again, like a, a folding table or even two of them side to side, just like those white utility tables, you know, linoleum, metal legs. 
And, um, and this is, there's guys in lab coats. There's a, a guy in like dress military uniform, like high rank, you know, bars on, you know. And then there's a guy that I remember in like, I'm pretty sure suit jacket. I don't remember if he had a tie or not, but I just felt like he's like, there's a guy in a suit, a, a military brass and a couple lab guys. Mm -hmm. No guard there. The guard stayed by the door, the guard in camouflage. And, um, and they kind of motioned. They said, come over here, Miss Leslie, you know, kind of thing. I'm always called Miss Leslie. <laughs> mm -hmm. events. And they said, um, can you move this item? And there's no, and I'm going, well, shoot, there's no ETs. I'm like, I, 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 maybe, you know. And it was this like, now this did look like a brass pyramid on a table. Like, oh. you know, whether it was solid or hollow, who knows. But it looked, mm -hmm. it looked like brass metal and it was small. I want to say about three or four inches tall, you know, little pyramid thing. About four inches tall, four inches wide, you know, four-sided pyramid. And they said, can you move that over here? And they pointed to a spot on the table. And I'm like, okay, well, you just, I mean, you immediately came from doing it successfully in the other room. So right. the belief system was, you know, engaged, you know, I go, okay. And, and it slowly kind of slid or started to, but behind it on this table set back was this other like control panel thing. And I'm looking at this thing going, what the heck is that? Now, between you and me, it was either a piece of ET hardware or a mock-up of ET hardware. Yeah. But it was it was slanted. It had levers, like there were grooves, and there would be a little, like a bar sticking up through the groove with a knob on it, okay? And it almost rem it reminded me of, like, a kid's game of, of the, the, the little wooden work table thing and the right. different shapes that you have to hammer in, you know? Right, right. And it looked like some of these shapes would go in these holes, and some of them were, were not holes but just like a lever groove. But there were these levers, in it, and I go, well, those look like those would move, and those are levers, and what the hell is that thing that looks, you know? Mm -hmm. I don't know if I'm fully formatting in my head that this is EP technology, but I go, that thing looks interesting. But this is the weirdest part, if this whole thing isn't weird enough. The shapes on these little levers and, and knobs were the same shapes that the ETs had over us on the ship. Wow. Now, Joss and I have talked about the ETs um. helped us cheat. <laughs> uh. <laughs> because, okay, so I'm looking at this thing, I go, and they said, move the pyramid, and I, and, and I think they could tell, like I was looking at the panel, and they said, never mind that, move <laughs> the pyramid. Mm. Never mind that. And I'm like, and I'm like, no, I want to play with that thing is what I'm thinking. I'm like, right. what the hell is that? That's, that, I, I guess I was thinking, that's ET technology. That's a control mm -hmm. panel. That's, you know, maybe it looks like something I've seen on a ship or, you, right. know, like, you know, that's a control panel. And, and they're like, move this. Well, okay. I, I kind of, I don't know. I got pissy and maybe that helped energy, you know, wise, because suddenly I just moved a little thing like three feet across the, the table, a little mm -hmm. pyramid thing. But, but then I glanced right back after moving the pyramid. I tried, I had to try it like three, four times. I, mm -hmm. I did have to try a couple times. Finally mm -hmm. it moves. And then I'm kind of like, there you happy. You know, I, I'm not that, well, yeah, I'm, I'm just being minorly cocky, but I, not, you know, you guys, I, I am fighting through this whole thing. At any moment you're like, okay, when I'm done here, they're going to kill me. <laughs> right. Or, so or, really scary yeah, crap. yeah. But, but, but everyone's being nice. Thank you, Miss Leslie. You know, so, you know. And you're really helping us. This is a big help to us. You don't know how much of a help you're being. Those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So there was a reward thing with it, you know. Mm -hmm. and, and, oh, very good. Like, after you, when you meet, move the thing, they're all like, oh, very good. The people, the, the guys at the table are, like, clapping for you. you know? mm -hmm. So, you know, there was this whole kind of psychological reward, you know. And um, and you felt like you'd done good, you know. And so, so okay, so all, so all of a sudden I'm... After, as soon as I moved that thing, I glanced back immediately. My eyes go right back to the panel, and the knobs and stuff start moving. I'm mm. like, oh, shit, am I doing that? Ooh. Like, I thought, as soon as I thought that knob, because it was, like, low in the slot, I go, oh, well, that slides up, and that one slides to the right. It's on right. the left, it slides to the right. And that one in the middle, or or, or that one's got a zigzag area, and it looks like you could, you know. And, it, it, again, am I like a kid's? toy or game or something right. but it had a very et look i mean it definitely looked like 
weird technology, you know? And so it was either a mock-up or a literal piece. But but it, as soon as I moved the thing on the table, I glanced back, and they kept saying, no, focus on the thing on the table. We want you to move it again. And the guy picked it up and moved it over, and he said, okay, try again. And and I at that point, I was like, no, I want to play at the panel. So I looked mm-hmm. at it again, sure enough, something moved again, just a little. But mm-hmm. it moved just a little, and I'm like, and I'm thinking, oh, my God, am I doing that? I must be doing that. Is it doing that or am I doing that? You know? Right, right. And all of a sudden, now I get it. And Jocelyn and I have talked all about this. All right. of a sudden, all of a sudden, the the guy in the suit turns to the guy in full, you know, uniform with, you know, bars and pins, you know, some kind of, you know, I don't know, higher rank military for sure. And, and, uh, and he had a hat on, a little bit of a braid, wings, you know. So I'm thinking, you know, naval air or something. Who knows? You know, just mm-hmm. obviously something like that. Admiral, some, who knows? You know, General Admiral, who got it, only knows. But, okay, so um, so the, the other guy turns to him and, and kind of, I think this wasn't necessarily meant for me to hear, but he turns to him and kind of or leans, leans towards him as because as, I'm, I'm moving the knobs on the thing. And as I'm doing that, he turns... You know, he leans towards there, goes the guy and whispers. I don't think I was really meant to hear, but he goes, "We got another one." Mm. So, and, so it's another one. You so, think so, like uh, hang I, on, no, I, hang I, on. Well, well, in other words, I did it. Now, mm-hmm. here's the thing. Here's the thing. I think it was like a double blind. Everything about this, I think, if you got to a certain area, they took you in there and had you see if you could move on your own. No ETs in the room. Could you move that little thing on the table? Mm-hmm. But I think it was a double blind, like we're going to give him the thing on the table, but like two feet back is going to be this other thing. And it's really to see if you can do that, if you can do that. Yeah. And also like it was like a buck authority thing, like, no, don't don't focus at that. Look at this. Mm -hmm. So if you went against authority and said, damn it, I want to play with that thing. Mm -hmm. And and it was. But what really tripped me up looking at it, I go, shit, those are the same shapes. That were floating above us on the ship, and mm-hmm. Jocelyn says, "Yeah, they were the same. The yeah. knobs were the same as on the ship. The aliens had us like gave us the the the, the key, gave us the crib notes ahead of time. Right, right. <laughs> That's so key. Because the aliens on the ship kept saying, stare at these. This will matter. This right. is important. This will matter later. You know, yeah. stare at these.' And if you looked away, they're like, "No, you got to focus on these.' Uh-huh. And I don't know if those things floating above me on the ship, if I was moving, or the aliens were." But it almost doesn't matter. It's like you're watching these things move. So when right. you saw these, they're like, oh, these will move like the things on the ship. Right, right. So the alien stuff is cheap. Do, do you <laughs> think that's the way that they that they control the ship then? I, yeah, it looked like a control panel. Yeah. I, mean, I have been at other control panels, ones where you lay your hands on it, yeah. you know, on ships. So I... I this looked like a different kind of control belt or, you know, or something adapted. Well, obviously these guys, this is something they're using. Right. You know, so this is on a recovered ET craft or something. We a designed reverse, that a reverse, theirs, engineer. Or, you know, reverse engineer. Yeah. Or, you know, something we have of theirs in our possession. Yeah. And it looked cruder. That's Joss and I have talked about this. Uh-huh. It looked cruder. Like this was lower tech version of high tech, you know? Yeah. Yeah. It had, it had a very, mechanical look to it not but, sophisticated you know, but <laughs> but again you know as, as soon as i shifted my focus off a little brass pyramid this thing you know i like they, yeah. they started to just move a little like wiggle a little or maybe go up just a little i go mm-hmm. oh my, and i've done some pk like um I think you and I talked about this. I think flywheel mm-hmm. was that conversation with you, you know, or uh, flywheel it's called, you know what I mean? Like, do you know what that is? No, I don't. Oh, oh okay. Then it was another app. Um, okay. A little tent, you make a paper and you balance it on something pointy, like a, like a darn needle or something like that. And you move your hands around it. You can make it move, oh. you know, mm-hmm. so, and you got to be careful. And it's, Good idea to have a bandana or, you know, we're all very familiar with face mask now, <laughs> surgical mask, bandana over your mouth. Mm-hmm. So you're not breathing on it because your breath gets affected. And if you move your hands fast, of course, you're creating breeze. But if you move your hands really slow around this thing, you know, five, ten, you know, foot away, you know, ten inches, five inches mm-hmm. away, whatever. And you can move, you can practice sigh and move that. And I've done that and I've taught people how to do it. That's cool. So, so you know, um. And, and I've also, 
with a team of people made a in my early psychic development classes what I took from somebody else um, there was this um, uh, lamp hanging on a swag chain in someone's home it was like a uh, 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 what am I trying to say um, made of different colored glass um, um, stained glass stained glass thank you thank mm -hmm. you so it was a stained glass lamp very artsy not stained glass like like tiffany style you know mm -hmm. victorian tiffany but like more really artsy with rough pieces of glass and black between them but they had this column it was like a tall column of stained glass and it was on this big swag chain coming up from the corner of the room and you know swagging over and hanging and in that in that class in someone's home we would get that thing swinging oh yeah know? and so um so like that, so like, a here, like a pendulum, like a pendulum, but, you know, but, but we, you know, we were sitting on the couch or on the floor, cross-legged and staring at this thing mm -hmm. and individually or as a group, we'd get it swaying. Okay. You know, mm -hmm. so, um, and, uh, so in this case, you know, uh, um, you know, do, trying to do that with the little pyramid on the table, you know, moving it over. But then also, like I said, I thought these look like, these exactly were the shapes. I mean, Jocelyn knew right away these are the shapes the alien showed us. Yeah. You know, and so they gave us the. <laughs> I love that. Test, you know, I just you know, love that. Or, 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 or gave us, you know, gave us the the the, the craft study, right? right. Or, you know, or something, because it's like, oh, those. That's what made us focus on. It. Like the, so formula. We, the formula. Yeah, it was. It was more like it was like, oh my God, they're the same shape, uh -huh. and I'm like, those look like they would move. And as soon as I thought. I bet that goes up, it went up, you know, mm -hmm. I bet that one goes over, it went over, I mean, you know, just a little, but, you know, and, and again, one guy kind of leans towards the other, and under his breath goes, okay, we've got another one, mm -hmm. okay, which will make more sense. What do you, what do you think he meant by that? Well, then Looking there was, there was another person that did it, and mm -hmm. it was, it was bucked authority, they kept telling you, don't focus on that, focus, they don't focus on that, focus on the other, mm -hmm. and, but I was like, no, that interests me more, like, right. there was a, we recognize what it was, mm -hmm. so it meant a recognition that this was ET technology or you know navigation mm -hmm. propulsion lab, whatever the hell you know, mm -hmm. and 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 you know and and so there was a recognition and a desire to say screw you guys I'm gonna uh, that is yeah, you yeah, yeah. this stupid little you know brass pyramid right you know? right. And I don't know if it was brass, it just looked like it. And like yeah. I said, I don't know if it was solid or, or hollow. I never picked it up, but but um. But, you know, eventually I said, fine, like, they, they you know, they weren't going to leave me alone until you move that. But I moved it, and then as soon as I looked, I said, that thing looks like it should move. Sure enough, the things, and I just moved the other, so again, belief system way up, boom, the other, the thing with the knobs moves. Mm -hmm. And again, not a lot, but a little. And that's when the one guy kind of under his breath turns to the other and says, okay, we got another one. Meaning me, I was another person that did it. Right. And, and, but it was also the buck authority. Okay, so then, and they go, thank you, Miss Leslie, that was very good, you know, mm -hmm. thank you, that you've really helped us, that was a big help, thank you, and I realized, okay, they kept saying, don't, don't play with that, move this thing, but I was so interested in that panel thing, that they did move, and it turned out, I think at that point, especially in regression later, I realized, oh, <laughs> you know, and, and Yvonne said in the regression afterwards, she said, clearly, that was there, one, you know, to see if you would mess with it, you know, and something about, you know, bucking authority or right. saying screw you or doing the other one just to appease you. Like, I'm going to move this to appease you and no, let's play with this thing. Right. Because you know? right. it wouldn't leave you alone until you moved it. But it was after I moved it that they then probably held their breath to see if you're going to move the other one. You know? Right, right. Okay. And you did. I get this. So there, thank you, Miss Leslie. Your big help. That mm -hmm. was really good. Very good job. Thank you for your help. And suddenly they went from being strict, like, don't do that, to, okay, cool. This mm -hmm. is totally cool. Like, you gave us what we really wanted, you mm -hmm. know, was their attitude. And I, and it, you know, again, a lot of positive reinforcement and feedback. Okay. So then they said, okay, you're, you're ready to go. And I hear the door open and I turn around. And the guard is, like, showing me the, the door, right? And he's kind of coming, like, come here, you know, and he's got the door open. But as soon as I turn around, in the back of, back wall of the room is a line of those plastic chairs with the little turn. You know, you know, you, we used to have those? Yeah. At Baskin Robbins. Yes, yes. Baskin Robbins ice cream party. Yes, I remember those. Okay. Yeah, yeah. So that's exactly what these were like. So... So when I hear the door open and they say, okay, you can go now, 
And I turned around, and I'm kind of smiling because these guys, you know, were like, oh, thank you, Miss Leslie. Mm-hmm. Very good. Thank you. You really helped us. And I, I turn around, and the guy opens the door, and sitting at that little chair with the little return on it, <laughs> is Jocelyn. Oh, my God. And she's sitting in there, and she has both thumbs up, like, uh, good job. <laughs> uh, uh, uh. And, and I said, Yvonne, did Jocelyn say that progression? She says, yes, she did, you know. And so, you know, that's an exact match on memory. Jocelyn's sitting there with a big smile on her face and both thumbs up, like, I mean, she's trying to be cool. She's just sitting right. there, but she's sitting, no one else is in the room in the back. Huh. She's just sitting there, like, she's just watched this whole thing, because when they took me in the you know, room and over mm-hmm. to the table, I never saw the back of the room. You know, I had no reason to look behind me. Right, right. right. You just weren't aware of her. Thing, and, and they gave me all this positive feedback, and it wasn't until I turned around to go out the door that sitting okay. back by the door, and this chair is jostling both thumbs up going with a big smile, like, good job, good job, <laughs> you did a good job. And so when they said you had another one, it was because I did it like Jocelyn did. I she see. Said, oh, yeah, she did the same thing. She said, I finally, she even talked back to them. She says, like, I think she says, she was like, oh, what the hell? I'll move the damn thing. And she moved it. Then she moved the other. And then it got <laughs> cocky, like, see? <laughs> but I think her you know, experience was just slightly different. But, okay. So then they take us out this room, down a hallway, and they take us in, like, an exam room, like a mm-hmm. doctor's office exam room. Mm-hmm. And then you walk in there and you're like, oh shit, you know, mm-hmm. what the, what, now, now this is, this is when the fun ends, you know, right. but it didn't, what, what happened is, is, uh, they had you either sit or stand. I think there was a cursory exam. Like there was a guy in a lab coat, a doctor, stethoscope, whatever. And they had you get on the, you know, the, the, the exam table, just, you know, very, very it's everything about it was like medical exam. And he just gave you a cursory, like, okay, you know, like. You know, check your heart rate, you know, look in your eyes, whatever, you know, it's, you know, whatever. It seems very quick, very basic. Have you get off the table? And he's okay. And then he walks up to you with this little Dixie cup full of liquid. Mm. And I need you to drink this. And now anyone who's been in this before, the mill lab, takes one look at that and knows what that is. Mm-hmm. It's the mind erase. Right. Drug. Yep. And it, um... Usually it can have a color. It can be white and chalky or chalky, thick and colored with the color. Um, and it's often pink and it often has a bubble gum taste. Mm. This time, if I remember, uh, I'm trying to remember because um, I think of it differently from another one. Um, I have to ask Jocelyn what color it was. We've talked about this. I remember mm-hmm. remembering that. Now I'm just forgetting. Um, if it was, it, um, I think this was a, a clear liquid kind of syrupy, and I think it it was either pink or blue. So there you go. Mm-hmm. You know, um, it was either pink or blue kind of syrupy, relatively, you know, clear colored liquid. And, and he goes to hand it to me, goes, take this. And I go, and I just stood there. And I'm like, no, you know. And he goes, no, you have to take this. And I'm like, no. <laughs> and he said, and he said, Miss Leslie, you don't get to go home until you take this. I'm like, okay, I'll be here forever. I think I said, okay, I'll stay here. He's like, no, no, no. You have to go home, but you have to take this. And you don't get to go home. And then he said something very logical. Goes, your friends are out there waiting in the hallway for you. He says, as soon as you drink this, you get to go join your friends. And they and they don't get to go home until you take this. Mm. And then I did, I'm like, and I just looked at him. He's like, come on. He says, you know, he, he even like chuckled. He goes, look, you know, you're not going anywhere until you drink this. Your friends are out there. They're waiting for you. You know, the people you were here with, they're out there. Your friend from the other room, you know, she's right there. And, and they're waiting for you. So as soon as you take this, you get to go. And, uh, and it made logical sense and I knew it. And I, I, I did like the Mexican standoff. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But he's yeah. like, Look, your friends aren't getting to go home, and you're holding everybody up. Mm-hmm. And you and now he's like getting impatient, but he's like, "Come on!" He's like, "What are you doing?" He literally said, "What are you doing?" You know. Mm-hmm. And finally, I'm like, "Okay." And he goes, "Come on, sing," you know. And then I did it, and he does this good girl. And I'm like, and I just like you, yeah. you know, I'm just like really, really? He goes, good girl. And I mean, it, it, it was just been funny and sarcastic. Yeah, you know? yeah. But he, I mean, again, everybody was nice. Nobody was harsh you know except for the one guy trying to get everybody in the room moving quicker like it was his job to test everyone uh-huh. get him out of there you know but but otherwise you know and the guys in the 
the, the room with the more advanced experiment, and then this guy here would be real nice. Okay, so so I drink it, and he, and he goes, good job, you're a good girl. I'm like, really good. Okay, then, I, I, again, the door opens a guard, and you, you go out, and I walk down the, the hallway and turn a corner, and now I'm on that bridge again, mm. you know, um, or similar, a bridge that went across that open work area. Right. And I turn to go on to the, the it was just, which is an enclosed hallway, but some windows along the side that you can look down on this area. And standing right there is, is, you know, Jocelyn and Brenda. Now, there was no Bonnie, but I realized now when she was taken out, she, you know, she's probably a half hour ahead of us, you know, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, uh, okay, so, you know, so she's taken, you know, whatever. Um, I'm staying in the hallway, and they have a group of people, like they're, making us wait before they take us as a group back to the moving walkway and then out the doors is where mm -hmm. we're going to go. But we're in that hallway because we know then we're at the hallway. We're about to probably go out. Right. And Jocelyn looks at me and she kind of has this funny look on her face. <laughs> and I think she could tell like the slightly hallucinogenic drug was coming on. So it had already with her because she's outside, you know, she's probably there five minutes ahead of me. Right. Right. Or more. Right. And I'm sitting there. And, and I guess she can see it in my face. And she's, like, chuckling. And I'm, like, going, this is funny. <laughs> and she's, she's, like, like, like pointing. She, she's pointing at me. She's got her mm -hmm. finger in my face. Like, look at you. And I'm, like, this sounds funny. And I'm like this, you know. And, and she starts laughing. It makes me laugh. And she leaves. And, and it, I think I look probably scared. Like, oh, shit. This is, like, you know, like this stuff is coming on. Right. And she leans in my face. And crosses her eyes. Oh my God! <laughs> no, well, that gets because now stuff's coming on, and that makes me crack up. Yeah. And next thing, know we're laughing. Well, the people around us were freaking out. <laughs> people around us are like looking at us, like, "Why are you laughing?" You know. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I don't know that there was much talking going on. Like people are just scared and freaked out. People right. next to us are looking at us like they're they don't think we're being funny. Like this right. is pissing people off. Yeah. People are just looking at us like, stop, you're gonna get they're just giving us looks like you're gonna get us in trouble, you're gonna get us killed. <laughs> this isn't funny. Some people are like clawing at the wall. Well, I wanna know, be with you guys. I'll be I'm with you like, guys. I mean, I'm freaking out a little. I mean I admit right. at that point that you feel this stuff come on and you're right. like, Holy oh, crap. Oh, shit, trails. Like, she even moved her hand in front of me. And she oh, knew. my it's God. Like, and I'm like, oh, shit, you know, trail, you know, because, you know, you right. the motion of the hand, you know, when I'm like, there's a delay, you know, whatever. Yeah. And, and then she says something, and then I hear the words, you know, so I'm like, I, I uh, experimented very little in my youth, but mm -hmm. a, a little, mm -hmm. very little. I mm -hmm. had boyfriends that wanted to do more, and they, I mm -hmm. didn't really want to, but okay. And uh, and then in other Milab experiences where I've been given this mm -hmm. stuff. So I knew when he gave it to me, I'm like, gosh, he's like, you, you know you're not leaving here until you take this. Mm -hmm. He says, oh, I see you've had this before. And I, I think I nodded, like, yeah, you know. And um, um, so anyway, so I'm there in the hallway. She's, she, she does this thing moving her hand. She's laughing at me as I'm freaking out. I'm like, mm -hmm. damn it. I think I'm like punching her. Like, you know? and, she, and like I said, she leans in my face and crosses her eyes. And I've asked again, Yvonne said in, in, in Jocelyn's regression, she, she remembered that. I mean, mm -hmm. I said, Jocelyn, what happened in the hallway? She said, when I kept making you laugh, I go, yeah. And she goes, I, I, I leaned in your face and cross my eyes and you, 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 you know, and so again, you know, we, you know, we both clearly remembered this. Uh -huh. Bonnie's nowhere to be seen. Now, I don't remember well. seeing Bill or Brenda there. They may have been nearby, but I remember. Mm -hmm. Brenda, after they tested her, maybe because she's young, she was 25, college, they took her and had her help some kids in another area, younger kids, that she had to go help them like they were testing younger kids and they mm. used her for that mm. so there's a slight everything in the memories matches up but when we're taken in this room she's taken to work with kids huh. and and whatever that area was i never saw i don't remember seeing the kids apparently they weren't a lot just a few kids in a room but brenda had to go help these kids mm -hmm. jocelyn remembers this whole thing of at a point when i'm not with her like when i'm in the exam room and arguing with the guy they took her, or she wandered off, like they, she was supposed to go wait in the hallway, 
and she found another hallway, you know, mm -hmm. and wandered off a little and saw some really weird things she said that were obviously like uh, genetically altered animals. Mm. And so Brenda, again, everything matches except for this brief part with Brenda helping the kids. And whenever Brenda was helping with the kids, because I was in the exam room for a long time. I mean, they, they, they were taking people and examining them, giving them the drink and taking them out while I was still there. You know, right. like, I'm just like, no, I'm not taking it. And he's like, okay, you can sit. I think he had me sit. Like, you sit there until you tell me you're ready to take it because you're not going home and your friends are waiting. Mm -hmm. But I guess Jocelyn found some other hallway goes down it. And there, anyways, that, I don't know. That's just her memory. But right. you can ask her. And it was brief. And they, and someone, a guard found her and said, you're not supposed to be here. Come back with me and took her back to the hallway. <laughs> so by the time I come out of the doorway, she's taken back to the hallway. But see, she was also on the drug. So I'm like, okay. Mm -hmm. You know, did, did she really see, like, genetically deformed animals, or was that the drug, you know? Right. I mean, who knows? You right. Know? She's pretty certain. She goes, no, I was pretty clear then, I, you know, and she's, she's pretty certain she saw that. Yeah. I mean, she's pretty adamant, and maybe she did, you know, yeah. okay, you know. But anyway, so uh, we go back to the, the, the bridge. I'm there. She's there. She's laughing at me. She <laughs> leans in my face. I, I, I start cracking up. Everyone around us getting us looks like, what the hell's wrong with you? Why aren't you scared? Why aren't you freaking out? And, and you're going to get us in trouble. You're going to get us all killed, whatever. You know. <laughs> but she is. And I'm, and I'm like, don't let me laugh. And she's crying her eyes again. I go, oh. <laughs> you, know, you weren't able to really control yourself well in this, you know, thing. So then they take us out. And, and they take us on the, you know, hallway, the, the ramp, the asphalt tilted, you know, slanted mm -hmm. road up to the entrance. You can see the doors, dirt. You go out the doors. There's the vans. Guards, they say, hurry up. You know, we, they put us on the, the van. And some people are already on it, passed out. Oh. And we realized the delayed effect of the stuff they gave us is you're eventually going to pass out. We were getting uh, groggy. I mean, you're, that's uh -huh. what they think. You have to hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. Like everyone's kind of like dragging themselves out there. And Joss and I get on it. And she, again, she remembers more that I said on the van that I'm just not remembering. But that's okay. I probably did. Mm -hmm. Everything she says makes sense that I would say it. Mm -hmm. and, and so Bonnie's already there. She's passed mm -hmm. out. So she's, you know, probably been out there half an hour out cold. Right. She's like, in the chair, you know, and so are other people. So anyone who didn't, they didn't pick through the rest of it. If they took you out of that room after the testing, you went right to, to drink sleep. the stuff, mm. you know, to the, the, you know, medical exam, like make sure you're good before they take you home, drink right. the mind wipe, you know, and, and then go on. And so, and so uh, we're, we're on the van and eventually Joss and I were both fighting it. Oh, that's surprising. And I think she says I passed out first. I'd have to ask her. I think she said uh -huh. I passed out first. But uh -huh. we passed out. And it's, you know, it's pulling out, out and going down the dirt road and pitching and yelling and, and et cetera. And now, at some point, now this is what's weird. We passed out on the van, right? Mm -hmm. But I'm put back in a blue bean back on my bed. Mm -hmm. So... Apparently, at some point, the aliens put us back in the house. That's like, what it looks like. The yeah. van drives down. Maybe we go back to the parking lot. Maybe we're, maybe we're, you know, the crop uh, maybe I'm scottied out of the van. I don't know. I don't mm -hmm. know the answer. I passed out. Next thing you know, I'm waking up as I'm being lowered in my bed. Mm -hmm. ETs go out. I'm laying in bed, first paralyzed, slowly get my, you know, like, all of a sudden the blue light goes away. I'm in the dark room, tiny bit of, well, it's dark because the blinds are closed, mm -hmm. but I start to move. I look towards the blinds. I can see it's kind of twilight out, and then I notice I see the ship. Wow. You know? And I see the ship. And then the rest I already told you. Yeah. Um, J Jocelyn says she passed out on the van. She's waking up in the morning, remembering everything, going, oh, shit, did that really happen? Mm -hmm. Bill's still asleep. She goes out. She's, I think she said she was going to come over and wake us up or see if we were up or something like that. And she hears us talking outside on the patio or whatever. So she makes coffee. Huh. So she goes, I, she goes, I'm going to go get them if they don't come here. <laughs> so she wasn't surprised. We started coming through the slime restaurant. 
and she's already got coffee going for us. Right. And, uh, and of course, Brenda was still asleep. And when she wakes up, she goes out her door. She hears us talking in the living room, but doesn't know what we're talking about. And does the talk to the hand thing. They like, won't even look at us. Goes in the kitchen and says, I don't want to hear it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. mm-hmm. Anyway, so, um, but that's the whole thing. That's, that's the whole thing from beginning incredible. to end. Bonnie didn't remember as much as we did, but she remembered the, the guy in the shirt and what he looked like and his demeanor, and that we had the skull caps and the wiring, and she didn't want to do it. And it's and always helpful did. to have someone, you know, remember it with you. It just yeah. is oh, so oh, much yeah. better. Now, now, here's the part that I told you to remember. Yes, remember. the guy two years okay, later. So, yes. So here we go. All right. Um, two years, now I kept saying, oh my God, there were these two other groups out there, you know, and those probably the, the Sedona Cottonwood mm-hmm. contingency. But when we were in the base, there's like a hundred, so maybe they were taking abductees from other places, okay? Mm-hmm. You know, they could have gotten you from anywhere, but the ETs helped, like, you could be on the other side of the world or whatever, who knows, you know? And, um, but there were these three groups, there were, you know, 20 to 24 of us probably in that parking lot with the guards around us prayed rest. Oh, I do remember. No. Now they think about the guards were holding the gun in front of them like you'd have the butt in one hand and the stock in the other, but across you, like, you know, like not pointing at us, but mm-hmm. just holding them. Right. I do remember that. Okay. I remember, Joss remembered that. They, they had the guns. Um, the guys standing next to the rifle doors just had over their shoulder, um, and they were there to, like, like if you went to step up, they'd reach out their hand and you could, you know, they'd help you up or help mm-hmm. you down, you know. Mm-hmm. And then the, a guy who was a driver and a guy in the front seat. And then I think the guard who opened the doors got on with us and sat in the back. Right. You know, whatever. Okay. So, um, and who knows where the other guys were. You know, maybe they got on the vans with the other people or who knows. You know, I don't, you know. And again, around our group, there were only, like, three guards around us. And I guess one of them walked over to the door. So they were probably, he was probably around us when we materialized there or whatever, you know, mm-hmm. being down or lower down or whatever. I just, whatever happened with the ETs were on board. Next thing I remember were standing there. And Jocelyn said, you know, I, I'd have to ask her again, but I think she, as she said, Bill and Brenda just said, we, no one knew how we got to standing there. Mm. But the parking lot was the handoff point to get right. us to these other guys. Why they didn't take us closer to the base, I don't know. Obviously, we're in a deep underground base, which is known to exist out here right. in Sedona. That's right. well known. And Tom Dongo, the great Nigan, I always say veteran researcher, but he is for many years. Mm-hmm. And uh, he's written a number of books about it out here and stuff. So, that it, you know, that's there's a lot of evidence of that. Okay, so let me get to the next story. So two years later, I have a guy come on my UFO sighting tour, him and his mother. This guy is probably in his 40s. His mom is, you know, older than that, obviously. Um, very nice people, very friendly. We do the UFO sign tour. He says, um, can I, after the tour, he's, can I meet with you and talk to you tomorrow? I have some unusual experiences. I've had that happen again. People oh, want to sure, talk about sure. their abductions, or, you know, yeah. metaphysical, paranormal things, abductions, whatever. And I don't have a lot of people want to meet with me. Sometimes I go back to the center of New Age with a client. I can in my car and we'll sit in a car for an hour and talk. Mm-hmm. That's happened many, mm-hmm. many, too, of course, like too many times, actually. Um, but, uh, but I, you know, people really want to talk and, and you know, they get me in the, the mood to, well, I will, even though I've been working all night and tired, I'll do it, you know. But this guy said, can I meet with you tomorrow, me and my mom? And so they met with me. They sat in my office with me at the center, and they said, we want to schedule an appointment. And I thought they want, like, readings. Mm-hmm. Well, it turned out they both were out to keys and wanted to share their stuff with me. Mm-hmm. And his mother. And of course, as we all know, it runs in families. It's all of course, know, very of common. Course. Okay. Like, like in Jocelyn's family, you know, where kids have had it and her right. separate with her and with her, you know. Right, right. And Bill, you know. Okay. Bill, a lot less, but then there witnessed it, you know. And at first, I thought he wasn't with us for a long time on this because I don't remember seeing him there a lot. But apparently, he was. So, you know, and this control test was some of the people didn't do it. They went right into the exam room, you know. So Jocelyn says, no, Bill was in the row behind us on the bus, knocked out, you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Okay. Okay. I just remember him being there. But I do remember him standing outside with us. I didn't at first, but 
in the regression and he bonds with keep moving on doesn't matter so he, i think he's there with us i think he's part of our group huh. well the more i thought about it i go yeah i was with our group but after we were with the group outside i don't remember seeing him again you know mm. but jocelyn says oh no he was there and he remembered bits and pieces consciously not as much as us but again he and brenda didn't get want to get regressed so going back to so this guy goes on my tour afterwards he says he wants to talk to me. Okay, I, talk, I meet him the next day. Him and his mom, we sit in my office. We talk about abductions. His mom goes to use the restroom, and he says, can I meet with you again by myself tomorrow? There's something else. And something tells me you might have heard something like this. And I go, mm-hmm. okay. I go, what? He goes, I'll just tell you tomorrow. So he meets me, and he actually takes me to lunch the next day. So we go to this little cute little place near nearby and, and have lunch. And it, they have a big patio in the back and um we're sitting outside on this big patio it was well, actually if anyone's familiar with Sedona it's uh, uh, a secret garden restaurant which is across the street from the center for the new age in what's called the Talaka Paki Mall anyway so we're sitting there and and there's and no one's around we're way off to the side there's maybe only two other tables of people and they're nowhere near us and he goes, I think this is a good place I can talk now. Because we talked about, well, we'll help. I'll buy you lunch and we'll go somewhere and eat. And I said, I know a place we can walk to because there's a park right mm-hmm. near there by the water. And But he said, no, we, this is good. No one's here, I can tell you. And he says, um, I've had some other experiences. I said, well, I assume can you go into the dark more? And he goes on, he goes, um, I looked you up online. I know you know about Nilab experiences. Mm-hmm. And I go, yeah. And I said, have you had that? And he goes, I think so. And he starts in this whole thing. Well, he, he'd already told me this, him and his mom. Um, his mom had lived here in Sedona for a long time. He did for a while. She, they both no longer lived in the area. He said, I haven't lived here for about two years or a year, a little over a year. And he said, um, when I lived here, I have these experiences, and he goes into this whole bunch of accounts. One of them is him and a friend hiking by the infamous Bradshaw Ranch out here, which is known for a lot of paranormal activity, and it used to be a cattle ranch once upon a time. It hasn't been for since the 60s. But, um, but anyway, so he's him and his friend were out in that area, and they got stopped. Now, this is people walking out our trails basis you can be walking out and hiking some of these trails and you can be stopped by guys all in black with kevlar vests and combat boots and Mm -hmm. and guns and he said we were stopped at gunpoint by a group of these guys well i guess he said there were two of them and they had guns drawn and said stop you've entered a restricted area after and right away you have to turn around right away and he said we were just around the bend from right where Bradshaw Ranch is. And he said, we went down to explore. We went down to the ranch. We didn't see anything unusual. We were down exploring, walking the perimeter. We had come back. We parked our car up the road. So now we had to to hike back to where our car was. But we thought, where does this road go? So they start this other road, which kind of takes a curve around a hill. And they actually saw this. There's more, and they've been back since then. But he said there's this doorway that goes in to, like, if you imagine, like, a, a little, what would look like a, a, a cinder block shed, but the mm-hmm. roof slants. And he said it slants down, like, so a triangle-shaped mm-hmm. cinder block room. And this metal door that's kind of rusted. And he said there's a gap. And they took little pebbles and threw it in. And it's clear as soon as you threw it in that there were stairs going down because you hear it go thump, 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 oh. down the stairs. And he said, you threw it hard enough. We learned to throw up at the top of the gap. And and it would be a long ways before you heard it go clunk, clunk, clunk. So he said, clearly, you go in that door and there's stairs going down. Huh. And he said, that's right there. And he said, you can find it. It's easy to find. And, huh. you know, and he said, you know, it could be somebody's root storage or something. You know, who knows? Right. Because there's ranches and stuff around. But he's like, clearly there are stairs that go down, down, down quite a ways. Huh. Down there. And, um, but he said, meanwhile, so I'm, you know, whether it's an, an entrance to go to that underground area, maybe. 
or it's something else like underground, you know, somebody's storage underground or something, you know, for but the branches. But but he just said it's weird because you throw the pebbles in and they clearly their stairs going right down. You can you can tell from the sounds you throw it hard enough. You, it goes a long time before you hear it. There's obviously stairs going down quite a ways. Okay. And uh, and but he said they were near that when all of a sudden these guys come out of seemingly nowhere around a hill, you know, and he said they're walking for us, but they have guns drawn. And so he said, we're, we start to put our hands up, you know, like, okay, you know, yeah. and these guys say, turn around now, you've entered a restricted area. And then he said, they follow them. Huh. But he said, this is the other thing. He said, they follow us for a while behind us, kind of, we're walking back towards the car and they said, you have to go back to your car and leave this area. Is that your car up the hill? Yes. Okay. Go back, go back to it. And he said, but all of a sudden he said, these guys, Maybe maybe these guys were all right next to. I think I take this now that I, I love this part out. They were next to a big black, um, like Bronco truck kind of thing, but something you know, like an SUV, a black SUV with mm-hmm. tinted windows. And he said they they got in it, and he said we walked up the hill, and they slowly ro- rolled behind us. Huh. Like we had to walk all the way back to our car. And he said it was kind of a waste because they were way down Bradshaw Hill. And, yeah. And they, they were up at, they'd left their car up at the top, what's called the top of Bradshaw Hill, is anyone who's been out there knows that area. But anyways, so he said they rolled slowly behind us, and he said eventually they stopped, probably, you know, 50 yards before the truck, but he said they stopped, and they, at that point, they stopped. But he said this is the other weird thing. We could hear them rolling behind us, you know, clearly mm-hmm. giant, big, heavy SUV. These guys stopped us at gunpoint, got in their car, and then rolled behind us. And he said... All of a sudden, my friend is with me, and he says, I don't hear the car anymore. And they've been walking for a while, and he goes, and they kept walking, and he goes, you're right. And they turned around, and they don't see the SUV. So it had been rolling behind them at, like, you know, huh. less than 50 yards, less than that. They right. said it was probably only 100 feet or so behind them, but he said they heard it clearly. I mean, it was clearly the car was slowly following them up as they were walking. So, like, we're going to follow you till you get your car. We're going to follow you till you get out to the road. Right. You know, like, you know, and he said it was following, following, following. And he said, finally, we're close range to our car. And my friend says, do you hear it? And he goes, no. And they turn around. That's it's not gone. there. And they said it was rolling right behind him and it was wide open. They said they would have seen it. Where could that go? But it yeah. wasn't there. I swear. So this is the story yes. coming from the same guy. But then yeah. he starts sharing these Milab accounts. He lived with a girlfriend out here for a while, and she was witnessing his stuff. And he starts to tell me about periods of missing time. So he's only not only alien abductions, but this other stuff. And he goes into this experience, and he says, and he's telling me the time, you know, the years and the times this happened. He lived out here for like five years and hadn't lived here for almost two years. Mm-hmm. They said I had an experience right before I left the area. And he goes into saying it was 2000. I have to think of the year. Because <laughs> it was, you know, it was one. Anyways, but what he says it was, this, you know, anyways, I realized. And I said, what time of year was it? He goes, well, it was like fall. Uh-huh fall and he thinks about it and he goes okay i was doing this i lived with her i moved out oh yeah he goes it was november i go when in november he goes mid-november well our experience happened november 15th and i think it was 2000 uh, it was either 2010 or 2011 Mm -hmm. okay and i said two years ago november the 15th he goes yeah and i said what happened and i he knows nothing about me I'm just saying, yeah, I've heard that. I know of someone else who got stopped at gunpoint. I know of people getting stopped by guards all in black, Kevlar vests, combat boots, you know, mm-hmm. whatever. Like, he goes, yeah, you, you heard much of that? He goes, he did, he, well, living here, he had heard some experiences, and he's, it had actually happened to him twice. Another time oh. with another friend on bikes, they got stopped, you know. So he's like, yeah, it's the second time we've had that happen. But this, <laughs> but this time they had the guns drawn, and they followed us in the whole oh. story. But he goes, okay, this other time, he goes, he goes, uh, he goes, uh, okay, so he goes, uh, we're, uh, uh, he goes, I, I'm with my girlfriend, and and next thing I know, I'm standing at the bathroom sink, not knowing how I got there, and I'm like, sick to my stomach, I'm throwing something up that's weird, 
you know. And he said, and 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 it wakes her up. And I remember this whole thing. Goes into this whole thing. And he says, and I start to remember. I says, you've never had regression. He goes, no, this is just what I remember. And he says, have you ever heard of anything like this? And he starts telling me this whole experience. He's in a hallway with like a hundred other people dressed in whatever they were taking that night. And they go into this room and they put on this cap with the wires hanging down and what the uh, chairs look like. He goes into the whole thing. The whole thing. And what, what did you do, and Melinda? Said, and we were taken on a, a van with other people and uh, and I'm just like going Oh I'm just he said everything like this and I'm I'm just like shaking my head. And uh, he goes he goes the look on your face, uh, you've heard this before. I go, yeah. And he goes, oh, my God, if you heard this from one of the other people, it was one of the hundred people. And I went, yeah. And he said, oh, my God, well, what happened to them? And I said, he goes, he goes, you know, someone else that was there. And I go, yeah. And he goes, well, who, who, what was their story? I go, me. And he goes, oh. no, no, who did you, who have you talked to? Who was there? And I said, no, me. And he goes, what do you mean you? I go, me. He goes, you were there? I go, yeah, with friends. And he goes, what, what? And I said, yeah, I was one of those other hundred people in the hallway. And I said, and so were my four friends. And he said, no. He said, no, you're kidding me. I go, no. And he said, no, you've heard this from someone else. I said, no. I said, it was me. And he said, you were there. And he said, and then he kind of got scared, like, oh, shit, we probably shouldn't be talking about this. You know, right? <laughs> and I said, no, no, it's okay. I said, my friends and I, I said, there were five of us. Three of us have had regression over it. He goes, yeah. He goes, do you remember the cap with the wires coming down and it wow. was on the wall and then they put it on you? I go, oh, yeah, you know. He must have gotten and, such a healing to be validated, right? And to... This was two years after the event. Wow. And Joss and I always wondered, are we going to meet someone else there? A hundred people there yeah. and about 20 of us from the area. And I said, do you remember how you got on the van? And he said, no. And I said, you need to get regressed over this. Huh. And I didn't tell him because I didn't make, I didn't want to colorize his memory, right, you know? Right, exactly. But I'm like, if he got regressed, remembered we were at the high school parking lot oh, or, or a yeah, parking lot getting yeah. on the van with guards, you know? And he was one of, he was, I don't think he was in our group. I didn't, you mm -hmm. know, I said, Jocelyn, do you remember what the other people in our group looked like? You know, five of us and like three more, but one of the other groups. But this you is know? how you I, put I pieces together. Of other groups other than he lived here. And he said, he said, I remember guys in camouflage, um, I think he said something about, like, you know, um, maybe near, there was another time where there were guys in camouflage in his bedroom, that was another one, but that was another date. This one, he goes, I just remember, like, like I was coming to, standing at the sink, and I was, like, having like sick to my stomach and throwing something up so I think he had a reaction to what they gave him mm -hmm. and he said and I was really out of it and that that woke up my girlfriend and she wondered what was wrong with me and you know that kind of thing and that's when he recalled everything and he said I think that you know I was coming like, like back into memory there yeah and he said I may have been in bed and gotten up and gone to the sink. He said, I, I kind of remembered, like, I woke up feeling really sick in the middle of the night and went to the sink. But so maybe he, you know, recalled right away. Right, um, right. But he, I said, and he, and he didn't remember there, I, I, I tried not to colorize or give him any other information, mm -hmm. but I said, when we were in with the caps, what did they have you do? He said, why well, have he only had bits and pieces of very disjointed, you know, memory. Mm -hmm. But the hundred people, you know, the people and the way they were dressed in the hallway and you know, the comical kind of down. factor, the way they were dressed, well. that we went in this room, small groups, that there was this cap with the wires, huh. and we were in this chair with the return, and they had you stand. I said, what did they have you do? And he said, I, something with their testing our minds. And then he said there were people at computers in a bank, you know, huh. on tables, you know. So there were bits and pieces, but there was some kind of block about what they had us doing, right, you know. Right. And I said, you you really need to get regressed. But I, yeah. you know, and he said, and then they walked us out and there was this, there was this weird moving walkway. He said, I realized huh. we were standing and moving. And he said, he said, we, I, I think it was like one of those airport walkways because we're standing and moving, and yet we're moving. You know? And I go, yeah, yeah. I go, he goes, is that what you guys remember? I go, yeah. yeah. Well, I, I wasn't telling him anything. Right, I was allowing right. him to tell me first. Right, and only exactly. after he told me what you I could validate him. Yeah. 
And he was kind of having spontaneous memory with me. Yeah, the yeah, that'll were happen. Wide, doors. You know, he was he was remembering more because it was very safe. Right, you know? right. And he said, "Do you remember seeing that?" I said, "Yes." Yeah. So you know, as he said it, I confirmed. But he he didn't remember. There were there were clearly a lot of blocks. He was yeah. just in bits and pieces. Yeah. But I said the date when he said mid month, you know, middle of November. He moved um, two months after that. He moved. Wow. Do you remember him saying that? And, uh, and, you know, and, uh, anyway, so he, he remembered all that oh. and, uh, and so maybe he was sub- one of the other people. Yeah. So maybe subconsciously he remembered seeing you maybe. And, and that's when he saw uh, you again. No, he just, he, he, he looked, he saw my stuff online. Oh, stuff. So okay. So he knew I did Milab stuff. Okay. And him and his mom were back. The reason they came back is they were here visiting, uh, friends of hers, you know, cause she, they lived here, you know, she lived here longer than he did. Right. And so she said, you know, he came back and he had friends here too, you know, right. he lived here for right. like five years. So he said, we came back to visit friends and I saw your stuff online. And when I looked you up on, when I looked up your mill app stuff or someone recommended that to me online or whatever, I saw you did these tours, you know, and, and, he, and, uh, and he, and he said, so you. they kind of used the tour. They wanted to do the tour. You right. know, his mom were dying to do the UFO tour, but right. he said, you know, granted that was a ploy, hope, hoping that they wanted yes. to meet and talk to me about their abductions. Fantastic. And it, they, they were kind of feeling me out on the tour, like, was I willing to meet with them or yeah. share my experiences with them? And they met me the next day, and we swapped abductions, and abduction stories, her. and his mom and me the next day, I'm, like two hours sitting in my office. Wow. And then, and then he said, and his mom went and used the bathroom, and he goes, okay, glad she's in the bathroom can i meet with you privately tomorrow? <laughs> and the next day he met with me to because that that he wanted to talk to me right. about possible new lab stuff and yeah. he started off like i don't know if i really have this i'm really confused and he goes into all these accounts i said yeah you're having it happen right. besides the fully right. conscious hike with his friend around bradshaw and getting yeah. stopped by the guys at gunpoint and the dis- disappearing suv you know <laughs> and you know i mean that's an amazing story i mean it's it like is. he goes you think that could have happened that way? I go, well, you know, you tell me. I said, yeah, I've heard uh-huh. similar stuff. I said, the, the, everything about that matches other accounts except for the except for the car disappearing. But okay, you know. Uh-huh. He said, where did it go? I said, God only knows. You know, right? Was right. there an opening? I, you know, I said, your guess is as good as mine. He uh-huh. said, it was, you know, fifty yards behind us, and all of a sudden we didn't hear it anymore. Yeah. That's why. And he said, had it had turned around slowly and started to roll away, we thought it was rolling towards us, and it rolled away, mm-hmm. you know. And I said, well, maybe there's a bigger opening or something. You know, who knows? Who got, yeah, you know, I said, yeah. I, I don't know what to make of that. But as far as people getting stopped at gunpoint or stopped at all and told you're going to restrict area, turned around, yeah, it, I, I had heard good, another 20 accounts of that. Mm-hmm. And Tom Dongo's had like 30 accounts of it. The owner of the Center for New Ages had like 10. She said she's heard it like 10 times, huh. about 20. Tom Dongo, I'd have to ask him, but he'll probably say, yeah, he's told me before, I think it's like 30 accounts of it, you know, yeah. without an exact count. And, um, you know, but anyway, so there you go. And, wow, and so thank he, you uh, so much. Thank you. Yeah. Wow. So he, yeah. So he, uh, you know, he shared that with me and he was clearly one of those other hundred people yeah. coming on my tour two years yeah. later. And, and he was blown away when I said, yeah, we were there. He goes, no, you're just telling me that. I said, no, I'm. <laughs> I, I am absolutely serious. Myself and my friends were there. Wow. I mean, and he goes, he, it blew his mind. That's yeah. hard to scare him. Yeah. He was even questioning if it really happened. And right. for me to say, yeah, we were there. And I, he goes, no, you're just telling me that to feel right. better. I go, no, no, no. We, no I, dude, I'm, I'm totally swear to God. Right. And, I, and I, I, I said, let me tell you some other stuff and tell you to remember it. I said, were you on a moving walkway? I think maybe I said something. He said something. Well, we were in a line and we were moving. And, and he said yeah, I guess it was a moving walkway because how could we be standing still and moving, you know, mm-hmm. and whatever, you know, so, and, and I said there were vans parked outside. He goes, yeah, there were these white vans with tinted windows and bifold doors. I said, yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. So, so when I knew stuff that he hadn't brought up, you know, so that clearly proved that I was there. Right, right. You know? Without a doubt, without a doubt. He said there were these plastic white he said there were these plastic white chairs and we had these they put this cap on and you had to wait till they needed you and then when you stood up they put the cap on with the wires um, down and all these wires came down well, and he said i you know and and i said yeah you know and then it but and he said there were these like white plastic chairs with metal legs i go yeah i said anything else about the chair and he goes like what and i said like a 
you know, return part that comes up and a little table in front of you. And he went, yeah, not all of them, but some of them, you know, so, oh. so he was like, how'd you know that? You know, so that helped prove that I, <laughs> confirmation, you know, right. Yeah. You know, so, so, so I, I gave a, a only, but I really didn't want to color his memory right, other than right. stuff that he already had a lot of memory about. So I could say more about the chairs or more about the van or outside or, you know, the parts that he remembered. But, you know, how'd you get to the van? I, I don't know. You know, I just remember riding in this van. Okay. Uh, you know, um, when you left the room where they had the wires and stuff, what happened? He goes, I don't know. He did say something about, I think there was a medical exam. You know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I said, any more about the medical exam? No, you know, mm -hmm. whatever. And I said, look, you're, you were there. Everything's matching. You, you could, you, you're already recalling so much with a regression. You, right. get, the, you get the rest the of it. The rest of it. You know. Wow. Well, but thank you said, so much, yeah. Melinda. Thank you. Oh, my God. Sorry, but I know that was really long. That's no, but it's, a, long it's, it's very amazing, and it it's needs to be told, and people need to hear it. Because, like, with you meeting up with him, there might be someone who's listening or will listen that they were there as well, you know? That's right. And, and it's, I've always, Joss and I have always wondered, when are we going to hear from someone else that was there? I bet you I will. Mean, I, I bet you God will. I heard from that guy. I mean, what yes. amazing confirmation and validation. Yes. Yeah. For me to have him come to, on my tour two years later, and for him. Right, exactly. And that's know, what happens when we get together and tell our stories, and we get to put more of the puzzle pieces together. And, and then I've got not only Jocelyn and her family and Bonnie yeah. all remembering it, yeah. but, the, but the, the what we call the alien calling card, this yeah, giant I love circle that. in the yard. I love and it. And we don't necessarily think that craft landed there, although God only knows. Right. But that they created that because she said, you must leave me some evidence. And they created this. They did like, just for her. I love that. Well, and just for our, our listeners to re remember that, right? To yeah. ask that. So um, yeah. I think yeah, we're going to. Yeah, if you're conscious in the experience or, mm -hmm. or when they're taking you, you know, if you've gotten to the point where you're not freaking out and you can retain some consciousness, say, you must leave me some evidence. Mm -hmm. She really does, and she's got them too, apparently, many times. That's I fantastic. Need to, I need to try that. Yeah, I'm yeah. usually not the presence of mind to, to do that. that yeah. Do you, do you, I do, I do want to ask one question, and then sure. I know everyone, we've been on much longer than we thought, and I really yeah. thank all of our listeners, but it's just extraordinary. I want to, take advantage of you while I have you in a way to, to, to have you tell your story. But do you ever feel that you get angry because you didn't have permission? Well, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. And that, you know, out of, I've had many Milab experiences. I, mm -hmm. I, as far as Milabs can be harassment, surveillance, monitoring, the black helicopter, harassment, phone, computer, you know, um, but the actual abduction by, or, you know, by humans or with humans present, you know, and then the handoffs, like I said, handed over mm -hmm. to humans, handed over to aliens, whatever. Um, th this was my most pleasant of those kind of experiences. And I believe I've, I have some partial memory of regressions for told about nine of those. Mm -hmm. Um, so this was the best of the, of the nine <laughs> okay. by far. Um, some others were more difficult for a variety of reasons. Right. Uh, alien abductees who also have the covert human involvement, when I work with them and I interview people about their experience and they share them with me, without my heat having to even ask, everyone says the Milab ones are a lot worse than the aliens. Mm -hmm. And now, you know, alien ones can be on a sliding scale of wonderful and educational and terrifying and everything in between. Right, exactly. But even people who had alien experiences that they either thought were terrifying or rough, if they also have the Milab ones, they across the board, I never even have to ask. People always say the military guys are a lot worse. And mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's like you just said, you get angry. It's like they know better. You, you can allow a certain amount of bad behavior or mistreatment from ETs maybe because sometimes you go, maybe they don't know. They're clumsy. Right. The grades are like little working robot guys, not that they're not real, but there could be biological robot, you know, or something, you mm -hmm. know what I mean? And, and kind of have this hive mentality and you get, maybe they don't, maybe they don't get it. Maybe they don't realize they hurt you. Maybe they don't mm -hmm. realize they're, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. Maybe mm -hmm. they do, you know, but, but, but people go with the humans. There's no doubt that you, they know what they're doing is wrong. Right. If they hurt you, they know they're hurting you. Yeah. You know, if they mistreat you, 
They know they are. And sometimes some of the guards can be border. Well, yeah, they could absolutely be sadistic. Okay? Mm -hmm. I, I know guys that have gotten the crap beat out of them. Of course, rape scenes mm -hmm. have happened. Mm -hmm. There's an abuse of a power situation there. Not always. Like I said, in this experience, everybody's nice, bedside manner, thanking us profusely, you know. And they wanted something from you. Well, they wanted us to, yeah, they wanted us to be able to do that. I right. kept thinking, Joss and I have talked about this. When they, when we perform that well, yeah, were they were, we kept thinking, when are we going to get recruited into something, approached, used again? Right, right. Nothing ever happened again. Huh. That was going to be my kind of next question. Results, you got me. You know, or maybe we're, you know we're on, we're in their databases, being able to do that. Maybe mm -hmm. maybe in the right situation they approach us, but. I, I never had another experience where I was tested for psi. Uh -huh. Yes, I said, you know, you know uh, but tested for psi or, or, or been asked to do that again. It, in previous experiences, there were some other versions of that, but, but you know, since then, I, I got to think about this. I know of one other very significant, another mass mill up event that happened since then. And I'm thinking maybe there's, I'd have to look at my timeline. Maybe since that event, there's two, but there's mm -hmm. definitely another one taken from a conference with a group of people in a military abduction that Lorianne was part of. Huh. And Misha and yeah. Solaris. And, you know, so Solaris, Lorianne, Misha, uh, a big group of us were, um, uh, 12 or 15, at least 12, maybe 15 of us were taken together. Did Canada. you have any experience at the 2020, the UFO conference? We just, then Lorian's, no. I didn't no, either, no, 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 no. but I no. thought I would ask because um, I haven't. A couple years ago at a, at a UFO con, um, the days leading up to it, a, a group of people who, a whole bunch of people who were there had alien abductions in the days leading right up to the conference, like oh. everything from the night before up to about a week out. So like within a week's period, a bunch of people did. And it came up during the conference and Steve Colburn, who does, has I love him. Yeah. Tent and does the, 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 um, I have light to see if you have fluorescing on you had everybody fluorescing to the brightness of, it was clear that within, within, you know, he, he, he can, he says sometimes it can show up up to about two weeks away, but it's very faded. And he's learned from the brightness of it. It means you had something like the night before, you know, out to, or the day before, you know, out to about a week. And I, he, I fluoresced for him so brightly. He said, you've had something happen in the last three days. Wow. Well, three nights before I had woken up before going to that conference uh, um, in my old, studio apartment I, I had here in Sedona, I woke up in the middle of the night, startled at like three in the morning, didn't know what startled me. So that's weird why my kind of was thirsty or something, you know. Mm -hmm. I think I got up, used the bathroom, went to bed, fall, fell back asleep. That was like three in the morning. I'd probably gone to bed at 11, you know, and I thought, mm -hmm. what woke me up? And I even thought, did I have any experience? No, I don't think so. I went back to bed, but went into an intense abduction-related dream that when I woke up again at like, you know, seven in the morning, let's say, you know, seven, I remembered the dream I just had when I went back to bed. So I remember I woke up very startled, used the restroom, went back to bed, and instantly went into this abduction-related dream. Huh. And thought about that, but but thought, well, something else woke me up. Something else, right, like, and, that's what you, you know, normally do. You know, and yeah, and, and that was an abduction-related dream doesn't mean it was an experience. Yeah. So I kind of wrote it off. And then when all of a sudden Steve does the testing on me there, which I just did out of curiosity. I didn't right. expect to fluoresce. And I lit up like a freaking Christmas tree. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah. I had him test so me like, too for the oh, first time. Oh, man, I had it all over the place. And he's <laughs> like, no, this means you've had an experience in the last three days or less. You know, oh. this this kind of brightness. And he says, this, this over here is a little more faded, but this right here. And it was like all over one thumb, the back of my hand, went like, a, like someone had taken a paintbrush dipped in the stuff went over my thumb and all the way up my arm huh. you know i mean and then splattered on my face my lips my nose whatever you know yeah i, I, said, I had something happen and and i he said have you had i said well no i haven't and he goes have you had an abduction related dream lately and i went 
Yeah, <laughs> because if you woke and paralyzed her in the night, or you know, you, you, read, you know, he right, it goes down his chart. Stuff. Yeah, and he's asking me, and I'm like, and he's looking at me like, like, like this is Steve. He's, he's, he's <laughs> not no Steve to do this. He's looking at me, and he's puzzled, and he goes, I, he didn't even need to say what the hell, Melinda. He just said Melinda. You know, like, like a dream. Woke up in the middle of the night, startled. Yeah, you know, he's I like, put he's that saying, together. He's looking at me like. Duh. What right. Why am I having to tell you of all right. people? You know, right. 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 Even said like like. Well, you know, he he literally was like, well, you know what that means. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I I, I met up, so, I, 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 I I lit up like a Christmas tree. So so yeah. I mean, I've been at other conferences where people have been taken from the conference. There was one time at International UFO Congress back when it was at the Aquarius Hotel, and there was a big mass abduction from that. You know, so. And besides the Hotel Del one, and you know, so I've, I've been in, involved in other mass abductions from events, but this was everyone taken from their homes, you right, know, right. in the week leading up, you know, up to, Do that. The, you know, some people had it the night before, uh, and some people had it as much as like a week out, but, but Steve just had everybody, like, this huge group of people just rushing like nuts. Wow. Wow. And he said, you know, there's some conferences where only a few people do or nobody does. But he said, to, that, to have that many people be that lit up. Something's and some happening. of the people remembered their experience. And some were like me, well, I had this weird dream, you mm -hmm. know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's good. Yeah, I, I had him for the first time at the UFO con. And, and he checked me all out. And there were quite a, quite a few different things going on. So, yeah. And especially in the sixth chakra for me, which you said was unusual. So, and the yeah. fourth, and and a whole bunch well, of other things. People have it on their hands or up their arms. Or yep. Side, yep. Or either on their neck or, you know, there's, you said behind the ears. Behind the ear. It, you know, you know for there's sure. the places where people are known to get touched yeah. with it experiences. Anyways, we've yammered on. And I on, know. Thank you, know. you so much, well, Melinda. At least in, you know, no, everyone's you know, loved people. it for sure. So if they can get a hold of you they can reach you at i've left all the links here for you and you. um and we'd love to have you on again sometime so well, obviously i got lots of experiences but i've done lots of research i mean i worked with hundreds of the mill lab cases yeah. and my 40-year history of the working group so you know anytime and, and you know my work as a medium i mean we can get into other right, psychic and paranormal right. things so anytime you want to have me on honey i thank oh, you I, thank i'll you. be more concise next time i no, just you happen to choose one of the experiences that's so detailed it and so is. complex you know and, and they can reach you through ufo sighting tours dot com that's and I'll right. leave that link. UFO sighting tours. Tours is plural with, with an your, S on the end. Yep. Dot uh, com. So we're going to. My website. And sure enough. Oh, my phone. Oh, yeah. Let's... Just finally gave me its first warning. For okay. The okay. <laughs> Perfect <laughs> timing. Yet, so it's, it's, I'll put this I in here. I know. Me too. Well, we, we got off uh, on a well, slow you start. but me on. You know, you're I, welcome. I really appreciate it. Thank you. For my pleasure. And, Thank and you, everyone. For for everyone tuning in, and you can also reach her on Facebook too, right? On your Facebook page, I did that yeah, uh, you as know, well. If you, if you have an experience or something you really want to talk to me about, you can contact con contact me through Facebook Messenger. Right, it's right there. You know, it's better than emailing me actually. It's okay. better to contact me on Facebook Messenger, and you and follow my stuff on Facebook. And like you said, you know, you're going to get the links to some of my other presentations. Yes. And yes. Endless hours of Monday. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was wonderful. Everyone, you like had everyone on the edge, edge of their seat. We're going to be six and a half hours of stuff. <laughs> she goes, she goes, Mom, I'm sitting at home with nothing to do. <laughs> okay. All right. And also, I welcome you to come to Facebook, the Barbara Jean Lindsay Facebook, and add any kind of links that if, or anything you want. And so you're welcome to, to talk with the um, to Facebook with the people in the chat there sure. as well afterwards. Okay. Well, if anyone, you know, has, has a Milab account and wants to share it with me, I'm very interested. Yes. The best way you reach me is, is, is through messenger. Not, you know, I think contact me through messenger and then we'll exchange phone numbers and we'll have a phone conversation. Sounds yeah. perfect. Thanks again so much and, and You're have welcome. a, a very wonderful me. evening. All right. Take care. Bye-bye Melinda. Thank, you. Bye -bye. thank you. And thank you everyone for tuning in to our extra extra uh, cosmic oracle show cosmic oracle overtime so thank you everyone much love to you this weekend stay safe and um we'll see you next friday and next friday 
Um, who is my next guest next Friday? I have a wonderful guest. Let me look who that is. I have, um, let's see. This is April. I have, oh, I have uh, Mitchell Hedges Crystal Skull next week with, um, with Bill uh, Homan and, and, and Carol. So I'm really excited to have them back on the show. So they'll be talking about um, their experiences with the crystal skull. So that's next Friday. So stay tuned. We'll say, take care and peace out.